Let's have it right up the Chels, up the Minnows FC. Big up to every single one of you live and locked in. Hope everyone's doing well. We're in live. First and foremost, guys, when you all smash the piece that like button. If you haven't smashed it already, smash it now. Hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 11K. And we've got the notification bell. Let's have it right. Smash that so you know when we go live on the Minnows FC. And we've got the Minnows FC Ultras membership, which is pinned at the top of live chat and down below in the description. And we've also got Lee Gunner's uh, link to his channel in the title, Land the Minnows with Lee Gunner. Um, before we get started, as we always do, let's have it right. We see things they'll never see. Shout out Chelsea Old Boys, our Minnows FC Ultra, Chelsea Ultra. And big up to everyone in the chat and salute to all the Minnows FC Ultras. Land your Minnows in the chat. Smash them likes. Hit the subscribe. Big up to Lee for coming on. And the Brand Envelopes did try to take us down. Let's have it right. That's why we were a little bit delayed. You know what I'm saying? Brand Envelope Matrix and all that. How are we doing, Lee, my geezer? Love to you to have you on. No, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, man. The sun's shining, 26 degrees. Um, got in the pool earlier. Yeah, I think it's a bit early for pool, mate. No, it was freezing. <laughs> Literally dived in, dived straight back out. Um, but yeah, beautiful weather, man. I'm, I'm alive. I'm breathing. Uh, no mega mutants have got hold of me yet. Um, <laughs> so yeah, life's good, mate. Life's good. And uh, big up to everyone locked in, man. Up the chills. Come on. We're landing the minerals. It's mad how I've got higher standards for your football club than are for your fan base, mate. It's crazy. It's, like, it's right. mad, isn't it? It's is actually mad. But yeah, it should be a good show, man. That's that's where we are, isn't it, really, Lee? It's all about standards. Uh, you keep your standards at the highest level with who's behind your in your backdrop there. Um, and that's what you that's the benchmark. We've we've yeah. got no benchmarks. There's no benchmarks at Chelsea no more. Because uh, <coughs> as Meatloaf Bowley said, I had this one prepped for last season and then we bottled it. Ah <laughs> no, no, the other one, the other one's doing the business. Um, yeah. but like Meatloaf Bowley said, you know, I would do anything for pound notes experience. We ain't buying that. <laughs> He said, we want to break down. There's a lot of walls to break down at Chelsea. This geezer's gone in and broken every single wall that ever existed. He's, he's knocked down the Roman Empire. I mean, forget about walls. That's what you've gone and done. So the standards at Chelsea are completely in the gutter. They're in the bin. And that's why us and the Minerals FC and all the ultras, bruv, we, want, we keep them where they should be. And that's why we won't accept this mediocrity that is currently at our football club. And that's what you do as well with Arsenal. And I think if it wasn't for someone like yourself in your platform, where the where the hell would you lot be? Because there ain't many platforms, bruv, out there that say, uh, uh, say it as it is, like we do, but also hold the standards or have been around long enough to, to, to actually witness what you've got, what you've witnessed, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of younger people on the YouTube scene, on the platforms, but they don't know what it means to to see the the, the, the success. And, and they don't and want to learn. They don't want to educate themselves either, which winds me up. And, and the yeah. football clubs, they ain't trying to educate them. They're just trying to take the money off them. They're like process and uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, progress. Oh, but we progress and we're a family and all of that. No, you're not. These Twitter accounts for our football clubs, they're not football club accounts anymore. They're just Twitter accounts. Yeah, they're top fan accounts. That's basically what uh, your your club is now. Tottenham's the worst, by the way. Yeah, Tottenham's Twitter account is embarrassing. It is literally like a 15-year-old is running that account. Yeah, top Spurs yeah, account. That's what it is. And this is what these football clubs are doing now. Yeah, they're just latching on to the younger generation that are more interested in XG. Yeah, my winger's better than your winger. Yeah, my goalkeeper's better than yours. My centre-back this, my centre-back that. Yeah, not holding the standards or the um, history of the football club, <clears throat> which winds me up because I've seen... I've seen Arsenal win 17 trophies since I started supporting them. And I've seen us lose nine finals in that time as well. Bro, that's 26 if we had won all of them, including the Champions League. <laughs> and I, but obviously, we didn't win it. Um, but I've seen us lose a Europa League final. You know, I've seen us lose a Champions League final, multiple FA Cup and League Cup finals. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's mad. And then when I've seen five league titles, <clears throat> and I've seen that team on that ball behind me, this green screen behind me, and I've seen the George Graham teams, the yeah, 91 team, unbelievable. Only you lot beat us that season. Yeah. Uh, Tony Adams was in jail. Uh, and I think we had three of the back four out that day. Yeah. With Adams being in Nick. Yeah. And we lost 2 1 to you. Otherwise, it would have been George Graham invincible. Yeah. But people don't educate themselves on this. And it's the same with, with your club. Yeah. And, and this is what winds me up, right? Because the, the newer gen, 
yeah, the newer school fan, right? They should be looking to channels like yours to get that education, to boost themselves and say, yo, this is the history of Chelsea. This is what it is. But a lot of them, for your fan base that I see online, a lot of them have started supporting during the Roman Empire, the Roman era, yeah? So I don't understand how none of them are calling it out. Yeah, because they've come, maybe they're just content with what they've seen and they don't want any more. Yeah, because I see this with Arsenal fans. I get it every day and I'm sure you do, yeah? Well, you're a fake fan. I didn't think that was a penalty the other night on Saka. Neither did Thierry Henry and Ian Wright, by the way. Yeah, they were. I'm a fake fan. Yeah, because oh, you're not an Arsenal fan because you said he dived. Well, he did dive. Yeah, let's just be real with it. Let's just land the minerals with it, yeah? Thierry Henry and Ian Wright said it ain't a pen. Yeah, them two scored over 400 goals for our club. Yeah, I'd rather listen to them two strikers than Rio Ferdinand. Yeah, or somebody else in the fan base. Yeah, but the thing with me, right, a lot of these people, like, when you compare the size of a football club online or just in general, me and you are debating, other people are debating, oh, Arsenal are bigger than Chelsea, Chelsea are bigger than Arsenal, whatever, whatever, yeah? You debate it on trophies one. <laughs> yeah, let's just be real, yeah? Then you can break down the trophies. You've got two Champions Leagues, we've got none. So is that better than winning seven FA Cups or six or three or whatever? Yeah, I know we've won 14 of them, but what I'm saying is, is a Champions League worth more than, say, three FA Cups? Maybe, probably, who cares? But it's a debate. But it always comes back to trophies, right? But now, yeah, yeah now it's just seen as acceptable in this era, yeah, of, oh, well, at least we finished second. It's progress from fifth. Bro, you've still not won nothing. And the predefined metric for success in this game is trophies. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't hand them out to the winner. Yeah. Yeah, so... That's, that's get what I say. Yeah. Trust the trust. It's not trust the process. It's trust winning trophies, and mm. that's what we were under Don Roman Abramovich, and he set the standards. The standards in that era. Do you know what winds me up? You get all these Twitter virgins that come out and go, "Oh, it's not the Roman era. Stop living in the past." The past was literally not even three years ago. Two right? years ago. And we and we won the, the Club World Cup. We complete the set. We won yeah, the, Champions the Champions League. League mate. Do you know what I'm saying? Our second Champions League. Like, what are we that's doing here? Oh, but we did not compete in the league for five fun. years. Oh, so? Do you know yeah. how hard it is, Lee, to win? Obviously, you do, because you're going to, bruv. But <laughs> how hard it is to win the Champions League, bruv? Yeah, I'm on. I'm, thanks for having me on, mate. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Man United, look how many Champions League finals they've been in. And look how many Premier Leagues they won. And, mm. and, and ratio it to Champions League one. It's not easy, bruv. They've it's only the won three in their history, mate. Three times, I think. They've, they've won, won three, yeah. They've won three. And look you how know? big that club is. And it has been big for fucking well back in look at look at the Munich disaster. Yeah, they won it a couple what how many years after that? I think they won it again, didn't they? Ten years later or something. Yeah. Like after that Munich air disaster, ten years later, I think they won the Champions League. Or the European Cup as it was back then, I think. Yeah, but they've only won it three times. Yeah, three times from Man United. Three times so it is very difficult to that's, win. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's it's the elite competition, you know. It's and you you think of all the great Manchester United teams that have, have played that tournament as well, and you think mm. how have they not won it more than that? Um, so look, I will think I do think it's rigged with Real Madrid, but that's another discussion debate. <laughs> in the but, oh, well, um, I'm so I'm on loan to Madrid, mate. So I'm calm, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, look, the bottom line is this the uh, how this fan base, and and it's predominantly social media, not match going, because match going fans have standards, and they go and they invest their money and their time, and they watch this garbage that we're watching currently, right? And you've they have come in these clown lakes and literally destroyed us, gutted us, brought the standards all the way down to suit their model. And you've got all these new gen supporters coming in that have been manipulated by the PR, the trust, the process, all the brown envelope accounts and all the copy and paste merchants, all the journalists, I hold them all accountable for the downfall Chelsea Football Club. It's not just these owners. It's what comes with the owners and all those in the pocket, the owners that people got to remember is they have sabotaged it and deliberately lowered the standards. Now, how can you say... We didn't cha challenge for five years in, with Roman for a Premier League. Under Tommy T, in that in that season, we were literally two wing backs away from being competitive all the way to the end. Once we got we lost Reese James and Chilwell in that wing back yeah. system, the whole True. the whole thing capitulated. But we were top of the league. We weren't even playing at our best, and we were yeah. steamrolling teams. 
So <coughs> we were built with, do you know what it is? It's the pressure. Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. Pressure make, is mentality, builds mentality. And that mentality came from Roman, bruv. And Roman demanded only the best, only to win and only to be successful and win trophies. So therefore, whatever you've got in that squad, whatever you're dealt with, whatever gaffer walks through that door, you know the standards don't change. And if you don't deliver, you're out that you're out the job. You're sacked. Mm -hmm. All right. Tuchel dealt with that without his own identity, without his own team. All right. Won us Champions League in four months. There's not one gaffer in the history of football that's just come in and then gone on, got you into six finals, three domestic finals. Granted, we didn't we we got robbed of them to be fair, but three domestic finals, and we got the Club World Cup, Super Cup, and Champions League, which we all won. All right. Complete the set for Roman. In a short space of time of 14 months, this geezer's won all these trophies. Are you winding me up? And now you've got agendas flying about on two call. And to back what? A Pochettino? A Potter? I'll bring me the herpes and the, the fraudulent Wolverine. What are we doing here, bruv? Because he's cutting shapes. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous, bruv. Like, mm. and this is the this is the fan base now. It's gone. It's fucking gone. And there's a massive divide in the fan base where people have got standards up here and then you've got the other ones, trust the process and all the trust the process ones are all these fraudulent copy and paste accounts, all these, all these Twitter accounts, all these other YouTube channels that don't say what it really is. Don't land the minerals and are allowing our club to go further and further down in the gutter, bruv. And I ain't having it, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You've got petitions going around, um, change the model, um, clown like, Clown Lake stickers, which we'll talk about uh, Lee as well, because I don't, I don't think I spoke to you about that. Uh, we've got uh, the Chelsea Supports Trust letter. So there's a lot of things going on. Currently, we are in a protest, but it's the early stages of the protest and it's building momentum. But we need to kill it right now yeah. because if we don't and we get to the summer, it's done. I mean, to be honest with you, I've got clips of me saying last year, a year ago to this day, all right, or to this month, you know. If we don't protest, if we don't check, stop this model coming in, we are finished. And right now, where we are today, finished. We are finished. Like you can't repair this, Lee, because you spent a billion. All right, you've you've gutted everyone out of the club that was wrote, you know, with Roman. All right, all those standards, all that, all that, all those professionals, all that experience. You've gutted out Cobham, the academy. The academy is just irrelevant because you're buying young kids to feed your, to, to make your own academy essentially and, and farm them and beachhead them from Chelsea uh, to Strasbourg, which is another discussion on top of that. So you've got all these things just bouncing off Chelsea Football Club that are all in a negative way. And I have to say, right now, yeah, you, I, I think people got to understand that these owners ain't going to change the model. The model's there. Now, they've spent $1 billion, and that $1 billion allows them to extract money now. So that's why they fast-track spending $1 billion. Now there's talk today of PR about they've bought um, some mansions just by the bridge, uh, real estate, and they're gonna, but they can't develop it till 2027. They can't start building. Well, that's no good, bruv. That's three, three years away. I, I'm not interested in that. Do you know how long it takes to build a stadium? At least they said six years to build a stadium. That takes them beyond 2030. I don't want these clans at our club in 2030. But then they bring out an article saying it can be, uh, can, it's a tight schedule, but can be done by two, 2030. Do you know why it can be done by 2030? Because that's when they're selling the club. It's a 10-year plan to sell the club. But they can sell the club, Lee. But the brand envelopes are telling you, no, they're locked in for 10 years. No, they're locked in with a glazer clause to extract money. But there's loopholes with that glazer clause, spend this amount of money, do this, do that, and you can start extracting. Yeah. Like Meatloaf Bowley's sitting as chairman, bruv, and he's 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 cashing in 20 million a year as the highest earner, bruv. It's disgraceful. That's 200 million in 10 years as a chairman. What owner's a chairman, mate? Mate, that, that, that's actually wild. <laughs> that's actually mad. I can't lie. But it's what it is, mate. It's all about, it's all about extracting as much money as they can. Yeah, and they're not going to change. The, uh, and, the, and the thing is, I know none of you lot want your club to lose here, yeah? right? But every win is a backward step to get this lot out. Yeah, so you need it to get worse. If he gets to the cup final, let's say he beats Man City and gets to the cup final, he's going to be a hero with the other half of the fan base. Yeah, even if he wins it or not, he beat Man City. He beat Pep. 
Yeah. Hasn't lost twice to Pep this season and then beats him in the semi. Now, all of a sudden, oh, yeah, look, we can see what we're doing here. Yeah. Your record against the big six this season is decent. You ain't just playing five other teams. <laughs> You're playing the rest of them as well. Yeah. You, like, the terrible cut league. Yeah, mate, it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's actually crazy. Yeah, but the, the mad thing is, yeah, you you need to get embarrassed by every team from now to the end of the season. Yeah, and then you'll get more and more people on board. Yeah, it has to it has to get really bad. And listen, I've been through it with Wenger in Wenger out. or Sheffield United. Just just oh just, no, it needs to get worse than that. It needs to get worse than that. You need to be down there in relegation. Yeah, like, obviously it can't happen this season. Yeah, but we've seen this with Wenger in Wenger out. Yeah, and I was going through that era. Yeah, and people punching each other up at games and stuff like that, like big fights every week. Yeah, but you need to get embarrassed every week. You didn't get embarrassed. Yeah, you got embarrassed against Sheffield United. If you had lost, you would have got more people on board with the Bowley out thing. Yeah, if you if you win the if you win the next game at the weekend, you know, all of a sudden the people that are sitting on the fence side with the win because that would get them the most traction online. Yeah, but when it gets really bad, everyone's got a tipping point. Half of these idiots are playing a game. Yeah, to keep that coming in. Yeah, and then the real ones are saying it as it is. Yeah, and then you've got some people sitting in the middle thinking, what do I do? Where do I go? Yeah, I don't really want to fall out with this side. I don't really want to go with that side. and be Because this is what you'll get as well, yeah? There'll be a lot of people that agree with what you're saying. Yeah, but they don't want to associate with you. Yeah, I have it in, in our fan base. But yeah, oh, I don't, I don't want to exactly, do a stream with him. I ain't associating with him. That's yeah? exactly what it is. Right they think now. they're a bit snobby. Yeah, fuck yeah. off. Yeah, fact and reality is, yeah, it's for the good and great of the football club. Yeah. Right. And I was marching and protesting to get Wenger out for finishing fourth and winning an FA Cup. If Lego Merchant, yeah, don't win anything this season, sack him. Yeah, because that's the same energy I had for Wenger. Yeah, same energy. This guy's gone four years. If you don't win anything this year, that's four years without nothing. See ya. Yeah. If he wins something, fair play. Yeah. But now keep that up. Now you've set the standard. Yeah. Now you've set your standard. Now keep your standard. And if yeah. it goes below, then get rid. Yeah. And this is where the elite clubs always do it. You said about Roman Abramovich, he is the standard. Yeah. Why are Real Madrid always successful? Because they've got flipping Perez there, mate. Yeah. They've got Perez. His, his mentality is win at all costs. Yeah. Their fan base is elite for a reason. Yeah. Their fans own that football club. The members of that club, yeah, all the paying members, they own that football club. Hence why they vote in the president. Yeah, they vote in P Perez. So everyone's on the same page. Chelsea under Abramovich, all on the same page. Yeah, you wouldn't have any fan, Chelsea fan, yeah, sitting there saying, get rid of Roman Abramovich. Not one. Never. Why? Because it was always armpits in the air every, every season. You're winning stuff. And if you weren't, you were getting into finals. You were getting to semis. Yeah, just missing out on the league. Just doing it. You were always there in the conversation. Everyone in world football knew Chelsea was serious. Yeah, Bayern Munich, another one. Yeah, why were they so elite? You know, people say they're not elite now. Yeah, you text me after the game with a picture of Tuchel and said elite gaffer. Yeah, bro, he schooled us. Yeah, I know you did. He he technical us. masterclass. Yeah. yeah, he schooled us the other night. First 20 minutes, we were quality. Yeah, after that, schooled. Yeah, we were awful second half. Yeah, now you let Leroy Sane have the freedom of fucking North London is ridiculous. Yeah, running through the whole best defence in the league. Yeah, good one. Yeah, but, that, but what I'm saying is they're elite. Why? Because their fans keep them elite. Yeah, yeah. Their, their season is their season's bad. Don't get it twisted. It is bad. It's the first season if they don't win the Champions League that um they haven't won a trophy for about 12 years. Right? And you've got our fan base, yeah, out here laughing at them because they're not going to do 12 in a row. Yeah, where's that standard for us? We've gone 20 without one. Yeah. They're laughing at how buying the rubbish, they're finished. No, let's just have this right, yeah. Let's just have this right. If Leverkusen had lost three games this season. Bayern Munich could be three points behind them. That's how good Bayer Leverkusen have been this season. They ain't flipping lost. I know they haven't lost a game. Yeah. yeah. They've dropped points in four games. They've dropped eight points this season. So you have to drop seven to beat them. Yeah, I think Leverkusen have already got more points than Bayern got last season. Yeah, and Bayern this season at this stage have already got more points than 2017 season when they were quality. Yeah, and um, I think 2019 or 14, can't remember. But they've already got more points at this stage than they've had before in seasons where they've done trebles and doubles and league titles and stuff like that. Yeah, but people just want to underplay how bad Bayern are, right? But the reason these three clubs, Bayern Munich, Chelsea and Real Madrid, were, in your case, the three best teams on the planet is because of the standards, bro. They were being met, yeah? 
And if they weren't, you're sacked. And even if you meet them, you better meet them with style or you're sacked. Yeah, because you can go and win us a league. Yeah. Cool. You're sacked in the tunnel, Mr. Ancelotti. Yeah, half time. Yeah, you've got Real Madrid winning Champions Leagues. Yeah, we'll have that. There's the door. Fuck off. You didn't win the league. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and this is the problem. That level, yeah, has totally disappeared from Chelsea. It's falling away at Bayern Munich. It's only Real Madrid that are still there. Man City are the same, by the way. Yeah, Man City, whenever you listen to that Kadun Al Mubarak, yeah, sit and talk. It's all about being the best, being the best. We want to win academy level. We want the best youth level all the way through women's level. We've got, it's we got not about money, level. Lee. It's not about money. It's about being the best mm. and the most elite because these guys have got all the money. They don't need to make money, you know, mm. and they'll make money with success regardless. Exactly. And it's harder with City as well because they didn't come from any success. Now they are successful. The money's going to roll in. The fan base is going to grow the longer that they dominate and the structure's been built the right way. Roman structure was more like Real Madrid. You know, yeah. it was hire and fire, irrespective whether you win or not. If you don't tick all my boxes, you're out the door. And and, that, and then I bring in the next gaffer. And it's almost like the players have the power because the players are there and they're harder to replace than the, the gaffers to replace. And you keep that mentality and that standards. Well, that's been gutted out from these clowns at our going to grab a beer, mate. Yeah. yeah. That's been gutted out from these clans at our football club because the simple reason is they're not interested in being ambitious in winning trophies. They want to win financially. And this is where it's 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 like you've got to understand that. If you don't get it and you don't understand now and you're hoping and you're with all this false hope of these players are going to come good and they're all going to gel and they're all going to be... No, they're going to be flipped, mate. They're going to be flipped like burgers in Burger King 24-7, bruv. All right? No cheese, bruv. No cheese, no onions. Just burgers flipped for profit. That's it. They're not there to sit there and dress it up and eat it and make, make it look all nice. They just go, yeah, right. He's been there for three years. We'll flip him off. We'll make our money on them. You don't think that they're making money now. They're already making money. They sell Gusto, Madueke, Cole Palmer. Jackson on the transfer market, they're saying he's 75 million euros. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a criminal, bruv. That's the market, bruv. All right. They go by data and they go by analytics. And the data and the the the, the transfer market tells you that's how much he is. They bought him for what 30 odd million. Mm. Well, mate, you do the maths. That's profit galore after one season. Why? Because they've come to Chelsea, playing in the biggest club in London, playing in the Premier League being broadcasted worldwide where every club can see and go, you know what? Spurs are looking at Medeweka going, actually, he'd fit into our team. Jackson's pretty decent. Yeah, we'll stump up 50, 60 million and we'll take him off you and we'll actually build, build you know what I'm saying? That's mm. what the model is. It's a feeder model. It's, <coughs> it's a farming model. That's why they're looking to buy stakes in Sporting Lisbon. They've got Strasbourg. And now they're sending Kendrick Pye as a 16-year-old to Strasbourg. And the Strasbourg ultras are going mad. He goes, they go, we're not a nursery home. We're not here uh, to, to school kids. And it's true, bruv. And these mm. are ultras that are protesting. And people go, oh, the protest's done nothing. No, don't think it's done nothing. Let's have it right, yeah? It's done a lot, all right? And I'll tell you why you think it's not done nothing. Because these clowns ain't responded to it. They've tried to let it die down in the PR. But the reality is it's still there. People that think if Chelsea don't protest, and I mean properly protest, at the ground, all right, and you think it's not going to make a difference, you're a long way from Starbucks, mate. Because I tell you this now, the PR that comes along with that is far greater than just online shit. Online shit's a good start, don't get me wrong, but online doesn't represent the real fans, bro. The, 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 the true supporters that go to games, bro. You have mm. those at the games protesting, mate. It's a different animal altogether. And these clowns will be damaged by it, bro. Just like they're damaged with the Clown Lake stickers, bro, of them looking like clowns. Because the reality is, all right, this is the most powerful PR, is the supporters hold all the power to have that powerful PR by protesting. And that will come, and it will come. But we need more and more people on board. The reality of the situation is... No one wants to stick their neck on the line to set a protest up. It's not going to come from me. I'll squash that right now because I've got too much agenda on me. And no one will buy into me. 
And that's yeah. just the reality. Like, I understand that. I acknowledge it. I've got all other YouTube platforms having to speak what I've been speaking for a year, and they can't stand they've got to speak it because the reality is that's the facts of the matter. That's the severity of the situation of our club. Now, we're all together. We're all chels. We all have to fight together for our football club and unite. That goes without saying. But why are we divided in the first place? I'll tell you why. Because of the PR that's been handed out by these clown owners. They've specifically divided the fan base. When we had Roman Abramovich, he didn't use PR. He didn't stay well. He stayed didn't well need any of that. Didn't need none he didn't of that, mate. Didn't, didn't need, need to. to. Let, let me just ruin this dickhead in your chat, by the way. Bartek, yeah? Bro, I've, I've probably been to Stanford Bridge, uh, Stanford Bridge more times than you have, mate. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, and let me tell you now, I probably know more about Chelsea Football Club than after your fan base. <laughs> yeah, I have. and you know this. I, I, I used to work with Rolfi for 15 years, day in, day out, proper chelps. Yeah, I used to work with him. Day, I was in the car when Abramovich bought the club. I was in the car with him. Yeah, I probably know more about Chelsea than you do, mate. And you're waffling about Arsenal ain't won this and this and that, bro. I've seen Arsenal win five league titles, mate. Yeah, five league titles, nine FA Cups. Yeah, two League Cups. Yeah, a Cup Winners' Cup. I've seen this guy invincible, doubles. Yeah, what are you waffling about, mate? Yeah, real talk. Yeah, I bet you can't even tell me who's the third top scorer ever in Chelsea's history, mate. What are you fucking talking about? Yeah, I bet you can't list the fourth and the fifth and the sixth either after that, can you? Yeah, I bet you can't tell me. Yeah, I bet you can't tell me how many kits Chelsea wore, which is a record for one season. But you can't tell me that either, can you? I bet you can't also tell me the first Chelsea goalkeeper to save a penalty. <laughs> yeah, I bet you can't tell that, can you? Bro, I can read all of this out. Yeah, bro, these people chat absolute rubbish. Yeah, he probably don't even know who Bobby Tamlin is. Do you know no, what I'm saying? Don't know Bobby Tamlin, bro. You don't know Fucking Bobby get Tamlin. out of here, mate. Absolutely yeah, sick and tired of these idiots. Yeah, he should be grateful, yeah, that I'm fighting the calls. Yeah, that ain't even for my club because I've got the standards for my club. So I'm like, yo, I'm jumping on with minerals today. Let's go. Yeah, exactly, let's raise the bro. bar. This is facts, bruv. Do you know what's disgraceful? Is that so Lee's let's on the my that that you're the How about that? Do you know what I'm saying? He's landing it. He's addressing... The severity, he's a rival supporter, and yet he can see the state that we are in, yet we've got our own supporters that won't acknowledge it because you're too busy trusting processes, buying into all this copy and paste merchantry, giving it all this bigging, and now your bragging rights are in the gutter with all rivals, especially Arsenal right now, Spurs are having a fucking time of their life, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? And where are we yeah. mid-table? Because we're a mid-table club. Like, let's get with a programme. Let's get real, bruv. Yeah, we are the biggest. We are Chels. But right now, we're not acting like it. We're not dressed accordingly, bruv. We're not being run elite. You know what I'm saying? We are elite, but we're not being dressed as an elite football club. Look what we bought, bruv. Half of you lot don't even know what the players were, were signing. You've never heard of them. You've never seen them. Hey, oh, every time I see players, players come up in your bench, I'm like, who, 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 who the hell is Cassidy? Who is Cassidy, bruv? Like, who are these players, yeah? Like, when I sit, see your bench yeah, and I see your players coming, I'm like looking and thinking, who's he? I don't recognise him. Yeah, and the thing is, yeah, right, there's, there's two two things that can happen in a football club. Number one, yeah, the fan base keep the standards up, yeah, and force change, right? And it's very hard to get an owner out of a football club. Yeah, let's just have that right. It is very difficult to get an owner to sell up. Look how long it took Newcastle to get rid of him, yeah, and, and, and other clubs around the world as well. It is very, very difficult. The Blackpool one as well. The right, they always do. That's it. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, if the money's right, eventually they will go, yeah? But you need to have enough people on side in the fan base to get that to happen, right? So if the owner don't want to keep the standards up, the fans have to, otherwise you end up like us, 20 years without a title. Yeah, getting embarrassed left, right and centre. 8-2 at Old Trafford, 6-0 at the bridge, yeah, and stuff like that. But then what you do you, is when you... Go on. You, not even you have been this badly. And you've you've bought a lot of youth, remember? You bought a lot of youth over the years, bro. You're trying poor. to build this young team, but you were never mid-table. Well, yeah. Not for this long. We 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 under this manager. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. In 1993, when we won the cup double. 12? We finished 12, 93, and we won two cups that season. Yeah. You're going right. 90s, bro. I'm 93. talking about after. I like yeah. in, in 2000. Oh, after that, George Graham had us up there. Yeah, and Wenger had us up there. Yeah, but, yeah. I'm saying under Wenger, under Unai Emery, under Lego Head. When have you finished 12th? Never. Lowest is Never. eight. Never. Never. Listen to that. Never. Lowest We've is eight. We spent more money than Arsenal have. All right. In uh, the more than any club in Europe in the shortest space of time, because obviously they want to extract money. It's all about pound note. All right, and profits, but. We spent the most money and look at the state of us, bruv. Like, do you know how bad our team is, Lee? He's mm. bad, mate. 
Like, we got a midfield that is just like Bermuda Triangle, bruv. And everyone's overhyping this mediocrity. It's, it's embarrassing that we got a, a fucking 240 pound midfield, bruv, getting run ragged by Sheffield, Sheffield United and Burnley's, bruv. 10 men Burnley. Yeah. Nottingham Forest. Losing at Nottingham Forest. Losing at Brentford, bruv. Oh, but we turned up against Man City and we drew. We got pulled up by Liverpool Anfield. <laughs> you know, we got done by uh, Manchester United at that moment in the season. We're in the gutter, all right? And they had the, the overweight Andrew Tate, Looney Tunes, Goofy, Fernandez, and Dolph Lundgren reincarnated in midfield. Fucking oh, playing years That's, what well. you know? That's what I call him as well. That's what I call him. Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Tomine, he does look like him, innit? <laughs> <laughs> before the Rocky film, mate. It looked, yeah, before, that, 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 that was Dolph Lundgren, yeah, before he got the Rocky gig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beat it, bruv. Beat no, but it's it. right. You're right what you're saying, yeah, because like, if you look at your team, you've got some very good players there. Yeah, I'm I'm not buying name, into the facts. Name them. Name them. What, I'm not, right, okay, let's go with the, the back line, yeah, and yeah. start from there, yeah, and work oh, up, oh. right? The goalkeeper you've got is actually half decent. Petrovic. Yeah, yeah, Petrovic. He's not bad, Petrovic. yeah? Petrovic. Yeah. yeah. Maybe give him another season. Let's yeah, see how he goes. But whenever I've watched Chelsea, he ain't the reason you're losing football matches. No. Yeah. No. Right. So he can stay. Right. Yeah. But then you go back line. Reese James, quality. Yeah. yeah. But he needs to stay fit. Because yeah. when he's fit, he's flipping an amazing player, mate. Yeah? yeah. He's up and down that wing. Yeah. Across the ball, he can defend. Yeah. Cool. Right. Thiago Silva's my age, pretty much. Yeah. Quality. He, he's going to go. Yeah. Um, other than that, your defenders, I'm looking at, I'm thinking, where's the other decent ones? Yeah, but Gusto. Gusto's decent. Yeah, he's a good uh, that's, player. I've, that's two right backs. Two uh, right backs. Yeah, right. Other than that, yeah, take Thiago out because he's going to be gone. Chilwell. Chilwell. Chilwell's all right. I wouldn't say he's great, but he has his moments. And the thing is, you've played him out of position, but he should know how to play left wing. He's a left back. He's halfway. He's always up there anyway as a left back. Yeah. So I'm. I'm nah, I'm, I'm not having him. I'm not, I'm, I'm not having him, but he ain't bad, bad. Yeah. Cole Will's got potential, yeah, but not a left back. Yeah, but the way your fans are gassed this Cole Will kid up, mate, is amazing. Like it is like he's the second coming of John Terry. He's even got his number on his back. It's yeah? disgraceful he's got his number. It's it is. He's, and, he's not a bad say player. Because they've got Zola's number. What a joke that is. <laughs> mate, that's that's embarrassing. Yeah, Cole Will's not a bad player. Yeah, but the hype he's got for one year, yeah, on loan. Yeah, Fafana's not bad, but again, like, two massive injuries have killed him he's off. He's yeah, he's finished. Him. He'll never come back the same player. Right, now you're going to midfield. Enzo Fernandez, yeah, very good player. Yeah, but again, he was playing in the World Cup. I don't think he was the best young player in the World Cup. I think he was, he, he weren't. He just weren't. Yeah, but he got, he won that. But he won the World Cup, so he got the hype, and then Benfica just absolutely pulled your pants down. Yeah, because that he ain't worth that, right? But at the same time, he's a very good player, right? But then when you put Conor Gallagher, yeah, who will run his nuts off, yeah, in his position and put him in Gallagher's position, it's always going to be back to front, yeah. Caicedo yeah. is not a bad player. Then three, Conor Gallagher, yeah, he's a triad. That's what he is. I don't think he's, he's a very limited footballer, yeah, but he's one that just run his nuts off. He's not a starting player for Chelsea Football Club, mate. Of if you want not. to win, club. he's a yeah? squad player. Yeah. He's an El Nenny. You'll have him in the squad for vibes. And if you need him, you know you're getting a seven out of ten out of him. Yeah. yeah? Because he'll run around, he'll get stuck in and he'll, he'll win the ball back. He might chip in with your goal. Yeah. And he will work his bollocks off because he, he knows what it means and all of that. Yeah. Now you go to the forward positions, right? Raheem Sterling, sorry, mate. Never really rated you. Yeah. Then you go to Jackson. Jackson has actually probably overachieved based on what everyone thought he was going to be. Yeah, with the amount of goals he scored. But again. Yeah, he's not a striker. And you're playing him as a striker. As the main striker at Chelsea, you're winning nothing with that geezer. No. Yeah, it ain't happening. And again, he could be a decent backup player. Yeah, you've also got um, Cole Palmer. Quality. Absolute class, mate. And you can see, I watched your stream the other day and you had it absolutely spot on about him. You said he plays with a swagger because he knows he's the best player at the club by a mile, yeah. mate. Yeah. yeah, and he does, which is why he ain't going to be there for long. It would not no. surprise me if City buy him back in a year or two. Yeah. Because he is that good, yeah, and he has got that swagger, and he is the, every time he gets the ball for you, like everyone backs off him, they shit their pants, mate. Yeah, that's the only player you've got in your team they're scared of, yeah. And then you, who else you got? Madweke. Um, Madweke, not for me, mate. Nah, not for me. 
He scored, scored a nice goal the other night. He'll score the odd goal here and there. He's direct, but he's clumsy as fuck. Squad, yeah. squad at best. Squad at best, exactly. Where else are uh, we going with it? Where Madrid. Madrid. Nah, mate. Nah. Beep, beep, roadrunner. Nah, dead. Nearly as dead as his trim. Yeah, like, sorry, mate. Nah, no good, mate. Yeah. Who else you got? That's Cassidy. It. Cassidy. Never heard of him. No, yeah, bro, yeah. Never heard. Like, no, sorry, mate. You're never going to make it. Like, these guys. Nkunku's not, Nkunku's not a bad player. Yeah, no, but again, he's but, again, I think he's again, finished. yeah, he's dusted, bruv. He's never going to hit the heights that everyone thought, and even including me, because I liked him when he was in Germany. But again, it's that league, bro. Yeah, that German league, right? That German league. How many players have come from there? Real talk, yeah, have come from that league, yeah, in the last decade and have actually gone on a level. Most of them flop. Yeah, and why is that? Especially the attacking players, yeah? Maybe the defensive ones do better. Yeah, but the attacking players, most of them flop. Why is that? Because in that league, they all play a fucking high line. Yeah, yeah. It's, you can't you can't measure um, these players playing in these different leagues whether they've got the minerals to come to the Premier League, and then not only just come to the Premier League, but come to a club like Chelsea, where the standards are from the fan base. That's where all its well majority, you know, match goers at this rate. I can't see online standards are just in the bin at the moment, in the gutter. But I, I would say Lavia's uh, a good player. But again, but again, we've not seen him play for your club. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah, him. So he looked he's good at Southampton. Minutes. Yeah. And now he's coming to Chelsea. He's played 25 minutes, isn't he? Yeah. We yeah. bought him from a relegated. The guy was never injured, was never injured at Southampton. Yeah. 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 We bought him injured. Mad. What? But do, do you know joke? what's crazy though? How many players did I name and say they were decent players? What, seven? Eight? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Eight, maybe? Yeah? yeah, that's a good core to start with. You need to get rid of the rest of them, mate, and go and get experience around them. Yeah, because all them players I named, pretty much, are pretty young in terms of age. Yeah, and not only that, when they're looking around, the other ones they're looking at are even fucking younger. <laughs> yeah, Reese James is one of the oldest players you've got, isn't he? <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah? Reese. Reese Reese is uh twenty four, I think, or twenty three. Yeah, and he's looking around to a nineteen year old, a seven, eight, a twenty one year old, a twenty. No, come on, man, what are you doing? The thing is, it's all well and good having young players, yeah, right. And everyone loves a, a, an academy prospect that comes through. If, that's why everyone protects Saka like he's their own kid. Yeah, this is why people protect Rashford. Yeah, and players like that. Oh, he's come through the academy. Yeah, Phil Foden, mad respect. Obviously, he's won everything, but Phil Foden gets mad love, and he's a top baller as well. But he come through the academy, so you want him to do well, innit? Do you know what I mean? He's one of you. Like he's, he's come through. He's a, he's a proper proper player. Like, but when you've when you've got them, yeah, and they're not that good, you need to go and get rid of them, and you have to get rid of them quick. You can't keep playing Conor Gallagher, mate. Yeah, yeah, he's cool. You can't play him if you want to win stuff. He has to be the back. There's, there's a yeah? reason why Conor plays, and people don't understand why he plays. Because Enzo and Casado ain't quick enough in the midfield. Facts. Gallagher Gallagher has to do the dog work to to compensate their their. Yeah, it's like he, he just called him the ability to do that. Or the clock, he's just cleaning up, bro. He's just cleaning up. Like, yeah, cleaning. <laughs> but, but that shouldn't be his. That's not his role, bro. Do you know? What yeah, I mean? he's not. He's, this is what makes me laugh with your team, though, right? Every time I watch Chelsea, which has been quite a bit this season, they're yeah, doing the watch longs on the other channel and that. But when I watch you, yeah. I don't know what your style of play is, number one. There ain't one. And you've always got players playing out of position. Every yeah. week, the starting 11 changes. Right? Well, you're never going to get any cohesion in the team when your backline changes every week. Yeah. yeah, the only position that don't change is the keeper. Yeah. yeah Do you know why that is? I'll tell you. I'll tell you why it is. Because this squad hasn't been assembled by a gaffer. It hasn't been assembled by elite sporting directors. It hasn't got any football identity or knowledge. It's been bought by AI scouting and data. And they've bought a bunch of individuals and gone, all right, put them all together and let's 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 keep them for five years and let them just build together. It's delusion, bro. Like, mm. when you look at our team, Lee, it's just literally relying on individual brilliance. And at the moment, it's Cole Palmer FC. That's all you're relying yeah. on. Just pass to him and Obi does say, you manage yeah. to and he's dug. Do you know what? Do you want to hear something? I'll end the minerals now. Take away Cole Palmer's GA this season, we'd be getting relegated. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. We'll be 17th right now. Wow. Yeah, bruv. And wow. people ain't waking up. 
Wow. People ain't waking up. They That's think great. we're gonna we're gonna build from this. We're, build they're, they're thinking we're gonna get European League. What we build what? What we ain't get nothing. There's yeah, nothing just... to build with, bruv. We've got no core. Pochettino is the best yes man you're gonna get. Now I'm hearing this slot fella. All right. I'm hearing oh, another um, hit, um, Arnie um, Slot. <laughs> yeah, what's the other who's the other guy I heard t- uh, today? Who's the other guy? The herpes. Um what are we doing here, bruv? They're not Mate, your, your, your games here. I'm looking at your fixtures right now. Your next game is Everton, yeah. Right? Well, that ain't gonna be easy because you know he's coming to just park the bus and try and nick a goal, right? Then you've got City in the cup, then you've got us, oh, no, yeah, three days know. after that cup, yeah. Then you've got Villa four days later. Yeah, in the next in the next 16 days, yeah. In fact, after that, you've got Tottenham, <laughs> then you've got West Ham, Forest away, Brighton away, Bournemouth. Now you're dusted. Yeah, if, if I was to predict them results right now in terms of like not score lines, but in terms of win, loss, or draw, or whatever, yeah. You ain't beating Everton. You're losing draw, to City. Draw. Yeah, I'd say draw. You ain't beating us. Yeah. No. Villa away, you're losing that. Yeah. Tottenham, maybe a draw. Yeah. West Ham, West Ham, I think you'll beat them. Forest away, draw. Brighton away, loss. Bournemouth at home, win. Yeah. And it'd be, oh, we ended the season on a high. Yeah, do you know what I mean? We won. We won our last game of the season. Well done. Who cares? Yeah, it Exactly. Led to nothing. We won't and move another from waste of the season. We won't move from mid table. Where are you in the league? We are ninth. tenth or ninth. We're tenth. I think we're ninth or tenth. Yeah, ninth. And and you're looking at the manager who's sitting below you in the league. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah. saying, bro, <laughs> because they want a yes man. That's all they want. They want a oh. yes man for their fucking kindergarten FC Epstein FC model, man. The model's the one. The model's the, the, the one thing that's killed our football club because it's about making money and they will make money. They're going to make money and we don't have to win nothing. Just like Spursy, they've got profitable. Uh, they're making massive profits and they're winning nothing or competing at any high level. Yet they're the most profitable club in the Premier League right now. All right. They're looking at that. They're looking at how Brighton buy players, low wage structure. So you're eliminated in the, in the transfer market where you can't buy no elite players of young talent, like world-class young players, because they, they, they've got big wages offers from other clubs. So you're not going to you're not gonna be able to match their wages, all right? You can't buy any experience because their wages are already at a certain level that you're not going to be prepared to pay. So you're basically stuck with now going even younger, 20, 21 years old, and so-called getting world-class players under 22 years old. in, in two yeah, like, 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 Real stuck, Madrid ain't, like, like Real Madrid ain't even already tapped them up anyway. <laughs> Gone got camera exactly. They bought fucking Endrick for sixty and million, and these cows will not buy that paid sixty million because they go, we don't inflate the market. Well, Real Madrid inflated it for you, you melts. You might as well bought him. <laughs> oh, like they've like right? got so much morals now. We don't want to inflate the market. Yeah, yeah you did hundred and fifteen on Caicedo. <laughs> yeah, and and also we got and spent Kendrick Pies, we a sixteen year old or no, he's fifteen at the time. We spent what thirty million on him. Are you winding me up? Thirty mil. I swear he's a bit. He was big money. Twenty million, thirty million. God knows what, bruv. Yeah. Wow. This is yeah. the thing. Yeah. Like the only way this gets better for you lot, yeah, is to literally kick off. Like I'm, I'm, I'm being real with it. Yeah. Because the results need to get worse. Yeah. Because let's be real. Yeah. Does anyone care whether you win anymore? Like obviously you want Chelsea to win. Yeah. But every win you get from now to the end of the season is to the detriment of Chelsea going forward. Yeah, so you should be wanting to lose every week. And I know it sounds mad to say as a fan. I've I've said this before. Yeah, I've said every single every single win Arteta gets, yeah, is effing us up going forward. Fair enough, he's turned it around and fair play to him. Yeah, but he still ain't won nothing yet, right? But it, we ain't a laughing stock anymore. So I'll give him credit for that. Yeah, we're not a laughing stock, and we're actually a f- serious outfit at the minute. But he needs to deliver now. Whereas with you lot, let's say you go and win the rest of them games. Yeah, let's say say you win all of them. Yeah, but all the teams above you nick points here and there as well, and you still don't qualify for Europe. All that I do, yeah, is prolong the agony into next season and it's waste hope. another summer. It's yeah, it's all it is. Exactly. So you need your team to lose every week. Yeah, and then what you need to do is when you're losing every week, more people are come on board with a Bowley out brigade. Yeah, like yourselves, get them out, get them out, get them out. Yeah. 
more people are joining that and then the snowball effect then you start the season poorly go and lose three or four out of the first five or six all of a sudden you're down in relegation yeah now you lose another one now you get knocked out the league cup at the first round well second round yeah like tottenham did this year all of a sudden you're out of one cup yeah that you got to the final of this season all of a sudden bang yeah the process bangs because now you'll have the majority on board but until that happens which it probably won't everyone's just going to keep going round and round in circles mate yeah and you're still going to be sat here in a year's time and i'm going to be sat here with you and we're going to be saying the same shit in a year bro and, and you know what i've had this with arsenal yes yeah, so i'm talking from experience bro yeah it, it must get boring for you because it was for me every single day saying pretty much the same things yeah and then another thing comes out and then another news article and another one and it just looks like you're an angry person all the time no yeah. we're not angry we just want a fucking club to win yeah yeah because that's what we've seen if, yeah if, if i've never seen arsenal win anything i think this is amazing yeah yeah, I'd be like, wow, yeah, this is great. We're up there with Pep and Klopp when the Champions League quarters against Bayern. We held our own. All of it. I'll be going nuts. Yeah, but this is the problem. The majority, yeah, of your fan base and Arsenal fan base are all on that page. Yeah, because they haven't seen me win anything. Yeah, or they've only seen, like, from... The, the 2017 is, what, seven years ago. So if you're a 15-year-old, you were eight when you see that. Yeah, when Conte won the league, you were eight. Yeah, if you're 15, but that's the internet, mate. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds. And that is what they're targeting online with all of your because Twitter that, posts. They want to filter phone. out, they want to filter out supporters like us and yep. all the old school because that's not where their, their money is. Right. Right. I say this to Kenny Ken all the time, right? Kenny Ken's born and raised Islamman, yeah? Right? Goes to every single home game. He'll do a lot of the aways as well, especially London, yeah? He'll do all the London aways, yeah? Right? And Leicester. Yeah, big up Leicester, right? Yeah, <laughs> if when on. they get back up, if they get back up, right? But they don't want him at the ground because what he does is he'll pay his season ticket fee and that's it. He'll go to the turnstile, he'll scan his ticket and he'll sit there and watch the whole 90 minutes and then leave. He ain't spent a penny, mate. He's done his grand or whatever it is, 940, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. but now what they've done, these football clubs are extremely smart, yeah? Now... Yeah, now what you have to do is you have to go to a certain amount of home games on to that season, season to, to be able to renew it the following season. Yeah. And if you don't go to 17 out of 19 games, I think at Arsenal, maybe wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's 17 out of the 19. Yeah. Plus, the, I think the cups are still on there for now until next season. Yeah. You can't renew it. Yeah. Yeah. So now Chelsea are on that. Tottenham are on that. Man United are on that. Now what they've also done at Arsenal. Yeah. If you've got a red membership, you can get a ticket one month before the game if you haven't got a season ticket if you've got a silver membership you can get them two months before the game yeah but now instead of you just being sitting on there at 9 a.m waiting for the ticket office to open online and you've gone to every game for five years on your silver now you're in a ballot system so now people that have been going for a decade every single home game on their silver have gone to about four or five games this season out of how many that we've had at home yeah it's perfect they don't want proper people there mate yeah, they want people that are just doing the tour of London. Yeah, they want yeah. corporates. They want yeah, corporates. corporates. They want tourists. They want yep. fucking all that. Doing a tour of London. Oh, I'll go and catch Fulham today. Oh, tomorrow, Arsenal play. I've got a ticket for that. Yeah. Thomas Cook, I'm not sure whether they still are a partner with Arsenal, but Thomas Cook used to lay on flights, accommodation and a ticket for a game. Yeah, through Arsenal. Yeah, Thomas Cook and Arsenal were partnered up. You could go and get a, catch a game with Arsenal. We pay you the flights in night. Like, you pay the fee. Yeah, flight accommodation ticket for Arsenal. What the fuck's that all about? Yeah, they don't want people like you or Kenny at the ground. Yeah, they don't want you there because you're not going to spend a fortune on food. You're not going in the club shop and doing 500 quid on kits for everyone. Yeah, taking presents back home. Like, oh yeah, I brought the oh, I brought little Johnny a kit. Like, brought little Lee a kit. Oh yeah, I brought little Sammy a kit. Like, fucking get nobody cares, bro. Yeah, proper people, yeah, that go week in, week out, don't go in the club shop. They don't. Of course they don't. They don't care. It's all about the football. It's all about going to match. That's it. Like, and this is the thing, Lee's. What these owners have done now is they're increasing. They've publicly come out because they know what they've spent too much money. We've got FFP up our asses, which we're all going to find out what's happening. In the meantime, they're trying to mud Roman when it ain't Roman's fault that we're in this shit. It's their fault for spending a billion. 
in, in quick succession and they can't they're not generating enough revenue to balance it on the books to make it look profitable where we're actually losing money all right because their whole thing is we need time to get that profit up yeah and that time isn't within the ffp constraints so now they're mm. having to offload common players but they're increasing the season tickets the coaches the food and drink um yeah. all, all of <clears throat> everything that they can increase increasing it and what they've what what the main aim is is because right now they can't build a stadium all right they're gonna sell as make as much money on all the increases to the equivalent of a 60,000 capacity stadium with a 40,000 capacity stadium and that's exactly what they're doing when the football is dog shit the yeah. process and everything. Pay it. supply and demand yeah, if, if pay it because... stop going, some, there's 100,000 people waiting for your ticket and they know yeah. this bruv and that's what I'm saying they're abusing the loyalty and love that mm. the supporters have for our football club and they're just getting away with it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm done with it, mate. Because like, there's too many come, people bro, that are just happy to, to be out. there. There's too many people happy to be there. Yeah? amount of times, yeah, when, when we came out of lockdown, yeah, there was supposed to be a protest, right? There was supposed to be a protest on that chair. It was Chelsea, funny enough. We were playing at home, weren't we? That was the first full capacity at the Emirates, yeah? Right? After fans were allowed back. There was supposed to be a protest that day. Yeah, Turkish and seven others turned up. That's it. That's it. Yeah, why? Because they're all too busy with their selfies going back at my second home. Oh, after two years of no football. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, come on, get out of here, man. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, we've we've turned our fortunes around. Still ain't won nothing, but we've got a lot better in terms of what we're watching and we're trying to compete. Yeah, but that also comes back to our ownership, right? Because this ownership... Who set up that protest? I think Turkish. There you go. Was it online, Jobby? Yeah, most of the retweets and everything online, the Dane in the country. Exactly. It doesn't have an effect. Yeah, but this is my point, yeah? So when it comes back to ownership, right, Stan Kroenke, yeah, is a shit owner. Absolutely awful owner. He just let Wenger take the piss. Because he don't care about football, ain't interested in it. He's more interested in his American businesses and franchises and all of that, yeah? Right then, that Super League kicked off, yeah, and there was five thousand fans outside the Emirates. From that moment, his son, who I believe is now the owner, yeah, starts getting involved. All of a sudden, we're clearing out the debt, yeah, for the stadium. I think we actually did that before the Super League. Actually, I think that was two thousand eighteen, nineteen. Um, we cleared the debt off. They refinanced that two hundred and forty million because, believe it or not, yeah, that stadium wasn't paid off. Yeah, it wasn't even halfway paid off. Yeah, or just over halfway. That was supposed to be cleared off the debt on that stadium, that Emirates, on 2030. Yeah, it was a 25 year mortgage, right? 20, 20 million a year. But Sky Sports, the brown envelopes, and all of that lot have conned everyone into thinking that Wenger had to sell all of these good players to pay for the stadium, oh, the stadium. which yeah. was rubbish. Champions League qualification paid the payment every year, mate. 20 mil qualified. You are yeah. debt free right now, isn't it, Lee? Yeah. So then check this, yeah? So Josh comes in, starts saying, look, trust, like, Trusting us, be excited, all of that. And we're sitting there, be excited for what, mate? Yeah, be excited for what? Since then, he's been more hands-on, although we ain't seen him for a while. You know, ain't seen him for about a year and a half now. Where is he? Is he still alive? But since then, we've spent some money. Yeah, yeah. as soon as his old man fucks off and lets him run it, now we're spending money. Because I think he actually does care a little bit. Yeah, maybe nowhere near what we want him to, but he genuinely does care to a certain degree, which is why we've started throwing money at it. Because he realises, yo, we have to throw money at this if we want to get better. This fan base are, are going to go nuts. But Lee, yeah, because... tell, tell everyone, tell everyone, that Cronkier out protest that happened two, was it not last summer, the summer before, if I'm right? It was a Cronkier out protest. I remember it. Do you remember that protest? I think that was the Super League, mate. I think that was the Super League. And are they you were saying sure Cronkier you know? at the same time. Yeah, yeah it was the Super but, League. But you had that. As that, well. gave, that gave us that little flip. Yeah, because yeah. you had it. You had loads out of Stanford Bridge. It was the yeah. Super League. Because we said we want to join the Super League. Yeah, everyone went mad. We had five and a half thousand outside the ground. But we had yeah. Roman. So we had no, no owner out going on. Yeah, you we just had no new. Super League. But yeah. we had owner out and Super League at the same yeah. time. Yeah, so, and at that point, Josh then got involved. There you yeah, go, bro. Then, That's the main 
That's the minerals mm. landing because people think that if we don't protest, change the model, sort it out or get out, you know, it's not going to make it. It will make a difference. They're scared. These owners are these clowns, bruv, are scared mm. that when Chelsea protest is too much because we'll have Strasbourg Ultras with us as well. That's two yeah, clubs. Right, and they'll all fly over. They'll fly <laughs> over. And what are they going to say? They can't avoid that one. You've mm. already ignored the Chelsea Sports Trust letter with yeah. a fan advisory board that you set up specifically to control with all your other yes men and m- manipulating the fan base into thinking that these these are Chelsea supporters that have uh, that are speaking for the fans. They're not speaking for the fans. You've got three on that board. What about the Chelsea Sports Trust represents thousands upon thousands of supporters, bruv, way before these clowns come along with this fan advisory board, all right? That tells you thing you need to know. They're arrogant. They're egotistical. They don't give a shit about our football club. They don't care about winning. All they care about is implementing their money-making scams. And that's exactly what they're doing. And they will forever turn a blind eye to all the all the, all the the big noise that's coming, especially from us on the Minnows FC. The Clown Lake Stickers, Lee, I want to talk about this because Simon Jordan, I've muddied him. He tried to dismiss it. He tried to say that we're in, but we're, we're morons. The supporters putting this out because the Chelsea Supporters Trust, he come at them as well for writing the letter when we've got every right to say there's no progression. It's the second season back to back. We're mid table. We're worse off as a squad. We're, we're worse off with a, a, a gaffer, you know, from Thomas Tuchel and the Champions League winning team to where we are now. We've spent the most money and yet we're meant to be patient for what? He's, so he's, he's always, always, he's always, always going to back an owner because he was an owner. Yeah, but yeah. he's a failed owner. So it's irrelevant yeah. what he says. Yeah, he got him into admin. And so I, I like listening to a lot of stuff Simon Jordan says, yeah. Right. But I, I've heard that clip, yeah. And um, and he was saying, oh, I think they're above their station or saying he said, didn't he? Chelsea fans are a little bit above their station. Saying along them lines, he said. Yeah, but mate, look, at the end of the day, it's your football club. If nobody bothers to turn up anymore and nobody spends a single penny on merch or tickets or anything, the football club folds. Right now, Lee, as you've said that, it's been broadcasted that for the Ever Game, Ever game, game on Monday, season tick holes have put all their tickets on the exchange, bruv. No I wouldn't even do that. Do you know what I'll do? Yeah, real talk. Right? Fair play to him for doing that. Yeah, do you know what I'll do? Yeah, because you know you've got this, you have to go to a certain amount of games now. Scan yeah? it and go. Scan it. Just scan it, just walk off. But you yeah, must have a protest. You might as well do a protest. If and then what that. you do is all of you that have scanned it, yeah, all of you that have scanned it, yeah, and just said, oh, sorry, sorry I'm not going in. Yeah, you all go and stand outside and protest while the game's on. I've seen Valencia do this, bro, against Bill Bell. They were outside. 35,000 Valencia fans last season outside the ground against Bill Bell whilst the game was being played. That's what we need to do. The, the problem we got, Lee, is that we don't have supporters like that. Most of these guys are in the East and West stand. All right, that have been invited five <laughs> grand for seats in the dugout. You know, they're, they're not going to do that. Soy lattes and chai bagels. And yeah, that, bro. <laughs> going, you know, and, and, uh, when they score a goal, it's just like, you know, like they're in the opera. It's, 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 Mate, it's, yeah, but do, do you know what? I said this on the stream the other day, right? Because somebody said McBurney had scored, and I was like, fuck off, you lot are winding me up. No way if they conceded another one. Yeah. Right? So I flipped straight to the game. I was doing the Tottenham game, and I flipped straight to that one. Right, and I see McBurney celebrating, yeah. And for, I was just looking at the crowd, yeah. And I was like, you could it, they panned in on the Chelsea fans. You could see they were fuming, yeah, because they're away fans. Away fans, they're they're relentless, aren't they? Yeah, like they were seething. When I watched you at home against Burnley, and they're panning in on the crowd, it's just glum fate, like just nothing. They should be going nuts. They should be going nuts. You conceded a second goal to them. Ten men, yeah, away ones were going nuts. Yeah, but Burnley, when you played them at home, when they're panning into the fans, mate, nothing. All you got, all you got at the end of the game was booze. But I'll tell you this, the Villa away game in the FA Cup, it was building up. It was already arranged to storm the pitch. And Roman Barrett's chance was kicking I'm off. Listening. I'm going to grab a beer quick. Go on, yeah. listen. It was kicking off. And uh, obviously we won the game or Connor scored and then it just changed the plans and it got called off for that moment. But it is what it is, guys, you know. The reality situation is, as this sticker says, yeah, is is the only thing that we need to push. It's the only thing that will force them to either change or force them to sell. And they can sell the football club. 
and I've said it countless times, someone still hasn't sent me any proof to say that they cannot sell this football club. I haven't seen any proof. The only thing they're locked in for 10 years is the Glazer Clause. And that's extracting money, which they've already found a loophole in doing. So someone explain to me what billionaire buys a business and locks them, deliberately locks themselves in for 10 years. Make it make sense. I'll tell you what it is. They have planned to implement this model and they've already forecasted it's a 10, 10 year project to cash in and sell and make a quick flip on this football club because they're opportunists, these clowns. They, that, that Jose Feliciano came out and said it was such a good opportunity to buy this football club and we managed to raise good the fund. They got it cheap. And he also says it's more important to build business value than win or lose on the pitch. That's not been broadcasted enough because that that's is right, That's right away there is, is scandalous. Yeah, because at the end of the day, yeah, there's a comment further back as well um, from CFC KDH. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. English fans are pussies with no standards, and they're built like people. Uh, they ain't built like people in Spain. No accountability in England. And this is the thing. Yeah, could you imagine just any Spanish, Italian, German, yeah, Turkish team having that statement come out? Yeah, that you've just said. Could you imagine the consequences off of the back of them saying that? Yeah. France, yeah, the same. France now to protest. Yeah, which is why that Strasbourg one was decent the other day. Yeah, and I'll see the clips doing the rounds. Yeah, yeah. and the PR that if that came from the same journalist that was telling us in Kunku's fit in January when he wasn't, and he's still out, yeah. The frauds because in the pocket of Bowley and meat like bowling Siri merchant. They came out and said it wasn't a successful protest, only 200 people turned up. You're having me on, bro. You're winding me up. It wasn't a successful protest. It was globalised, mate. Everyone saw it. It was yeah. flares, and fireworks, black smoke in the game, banners. Yeah. They got the drums out. They got the megaphone out. They're all marching. Yeah, yeah, this is the thing. It's only 200 now. Oh, it's only 200 people. It's a small minority and they just swat it away. Oh, look, the, the, look at these little ants. Yeah. Now, next thing, it'll be 500. Then after that, it'll be 1,000. Then it'll be 5,000. And all of a sudden, they're finished. Yeah, and this is what you've got to do. Yeah. The thing is, when we've done protests at Arsenal, yeah, it's normally been done by people that are not liked en masse. So most people don't want to associate with it. Yeah, they won't. Yeah, and then it's the snobbery kicks in, like that guy said. Yeah, they don't know how to protest properly because, oh, well, this makes me a bad fan. You know, it's not about the results. And this is what football has become in England. It's more of a social gathering on match day than it is about the result. And if you get the result, perfect, cool extra bonus but it's about going and having a jolly up now yeah and that was all because of lockdown yeah and these billionaires yeah they didn't have a lockdown bruv they weren't in lockdown all these billionaires were flying around the world bruv they were doing what they wanted why because they got money whilst all the little ants say oh, you go and sit in your properties for two years so now what happens is they played an emotional connection yeah because now you've had two years without going to football so now you want to spend every single second of that breathing and living about your football club's the best. Even if we don't win, we're just here. Come on, let's go. You're getting louder. Blah, blah, blah. The stadiums are louder. Yeah, that's probably say cranked it up on TV, mate. Right, let's be real with it. Right, But not only that, yeah, when you look at these clubs abroad, yeah, it's true, bruv. English fans, yeah, a large percentage of English fans are the plucky loser all the time. Yeah, which is why England national team wins nothing. Yeah, this is oh well, we don't like Southgate, we don't like this, but what are you doing about it? Nothing. Yeah, when you go to Spain, Italy, Germany, France, bruv, they're kicking off. Yeah, look at look at a couple of seasons ago, yeah. Then Barca fans stormed the Barca Stadium. Yeah, yeah there was about 10,000 of them. I don't even know, well, I can't remember what they were protesting for. 10,000 of them broke the gates and run on the pitch. Yeah, look at Man United, yeah, which is why I'm laughing now. Right, but I think there's a lot of Man United fans that are ready to tip. If they go and get Southgate or Potter, yeah, I think a lot of them will go, bang, no, nah, this is a joke. But because they've got Barada in there from City, the uh, Jim Radcliffe's in there. they will, Lee. That, l listen. That's no, but the reason, I'm saying that, the reason I'm saying that, yeah, yeah. is they got the biggest game in England cancelled, yeah, by storming the pitch. Yeah. Yeah? So they have got a little bit of a backbone there. And when I say a little bit, there was 10,000 of them storming the shops, looting and everything. Yeah, but that's when the Glazers put the club up for sale after that. Yep. And guess what? Now it's died down again. Yeah, because the club 
hasn't been totally sold. And in fact, you know what's funny about that, yeah? They're making out that's 25% he's bought Jim Glazer, yeah? Uh, Jim Glazer, Jim Ratcliffe, yeah? He's bought 25% of the Glazer's shares, not yeah, 25% of the club, which actually equates to 17.7% of yeah, the football nothing, club, right? But what they're seeing right now at Man United is, well, this guy's gone, murto has gone. Now they're going to get in, um, they've got Barada in from City, they're getting Wilcox in, they're getting Ashworth Ashworth. in. Yeah, right? So they're seeing Man United fans. Oh, actually, we're kind of seeing some kind of change real quick since Jim's rocked up. But if this all goes sideways next season, yeah, I think a lot of them have go, fuck this, this is a facade. But it's going to take that one season for them to see that. It could either get better or it could get a lot worse, right? And this is the problem with Chelsea. Yeah, it's only going to get worse, bruv. <laughs> yeah, and when you look, when you look at these teams abroad, right, the standards are through the roof. I see Darmstadt. Yeah, they're bottom of the German league, bruv. Have a guy on the pitch with a microphone, yeah, because they got banged five in the first half. Yeah, I think I don't. I think they were playing Bayern or someone. I can't remember. Yeah, I saw. There's a clip yeah. going around there, and we, they were saying we should be doing this at the bridge. We should be, but 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 yeah, well, who's doing it then? Who's going to jump the Hordings, the Ad Hordings, with a megaphone? Yeah, look at look at um look at uh, PSG. Yeah, they lost to Monaco and they lost to Marseille. Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, Kim Pembe and all that lot are standing there with some geezer with a megaphone in his fucking face. Yeah, kicking off when Messi and all that were there last season. Yeah, they all stand there like. Yeah, AC Milan was Giroud and that. Yeah, their ultra was on the pitch the other month. Yeah, and, and the, the manager and all the players were standing there going, yes, yeah, there's 5,000 of them Yeah, in the crowd, stayed behind. There was one the other week, uh, sorry, earlier this season, Leon. Yeah, Leon, yeah, we're losing, I think, 4-0 at half time to PSG, right? At half time, their main ultra jumps the adultings, goes and tells whoever... Go and get that manager out here and get that fucking team out here now. A uh, half time. Yeah. They won the second half. Fair enough. They were never coming back from 4 0 down, but they won the second half and got a goal back and won it 1 0. So 4 1. Yeah. Accountability broke. Yeah. Because now them players know. And what that, that guy was saying is many better players have played for this club than you lot. Yeah. And they've never embarrassed us. You better fucking fix up. Yeah. We're 4 0 down. Yes, it's PSG. Put some fight in. Look at Ajax. Smashed the place to pieces. Yeah. Smashed it to pieces. You're, the you're, problem you're is in England, oh, that's me. toxic. It's negative. Why? Uh, because of the PR in this country, bro. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's what, and also um, the the old Bill and, and the way it is over here, they try and contain you. They don't want you to be like that because they want to be able to control you. Yeah. And in England, it's just different, bro. It, it's, it's, it's the way yeah. it is now. You know, so, so, so listen, listen, 100%. I guarantee you, bruv, yeah, if I could get one of them things in the ground, I'll fucking do it, bruv. I'll do it all day long, bruv. I won't give a yeah, shit. Do you, know what, do you know what's mad as well, yeah? Could you imagine, right, if our football clubs in this country were owned by our fan bases? Because that's what happens in France and Spain and other countries. Yeah, Real Madrid is owned by its fans, so is Barcelona. Yeah, I think most of the clubs are owned by fans, hence why they vote for a president. Yeah, could you imagine? Yeah, our fans or your fans owning our club? Yeah, it'd be a fucking mess. It's already a mess. Yeah, absolute mess. Could you imagine our ultra being Don Robbie standing there? <laughs> fucking do me a favor. Oh, what a shambles. Yeah, and Julian and that lot. Uh, come on, man. What are we doing here, man? No, but this is the thing it's only gonna get worse for you lot. It's only gonna get worse for Peter, you. I'm, I've already accepted it. I knew this a year ago. I'm I'm sitting back laughing at everyone. If I'm being real, if I want to be arrogant, yeah, I'm just sitting back and laughing at everyone, bruv. Because I told you so. And you had an agenda on me. Yeah, but then no, that's your negative because you were waiting for this to happen. You're enjoying this. Yeah, of course that's I want to wait. Cool. I'm, I'm fucking I'm sense. on stream trying to warn everyone to go against it mm. for the, to save our football club. But you're only doing oh, it yeah, for clicks, I want it to happen. Of course I Yeah, do. you're doing it for views, Johnny. You're doing it for yeah. views, mate. Yeah, what views, <laughs> bruv? I had 5K subscribers, man. All right? And I was making the most noise out of all you 40, 50, 60K accounts, man. You know what I'm saying? You're an embarrassment. You've got all those followers and you don't even land it, bruv, because you're sitting there and you're too busy 
wanking off. Oh, we've sold Mant, we've sold Havertz, we've sold fucking Georgino, we've sold all these players. Oh, we've, we've had a 10 out of 10 window. Oh, Bowley, we love you and all this. Going on Twitter spaces and all this crap. It's, it's embarrassing, man. Absolutely embarrassing. When I when I know and I know my football club and I know football teams and I've watched some great teams at Chelsea. These are this team doesn't doesn't even get come near eight teams in the eighties, bruv. You know That's what I'm saying, mm. bro? But this is this is why I've been on the on the green screen. Yeah, bro. I'm supposed to rate Martin Odegaard, bro. I've, I've seen Bergkamp. Do me a favour. Yeah, Odegaard played well the other night. Well done. First time. Please, he's I want to ask you. Game. I want to ask you. Yeah. If 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 a, if players win you the Champions League. Right, they won you Champions League. You booing them because they left your club? No. It, and and listen, this is the thing with me. Yeah, when Van Persie went to Man United, I was like, "Yo, fair play, fair play," because our standards are on the floor. He wants to win, and this is why Cesc Fabregas, another one, fair play. Yeah, people hate the fact that I like Cesc and say he's one of our best ever players. Yeah, because he went Chelsea. Well, didn't Manu Petit go Chelsea after Barcelona as well? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The evidence it wasn't directly, the way, it wasn't it's the way he left the club. He said he was injured and went to Silverstone and forced the move through to Barcelona. Bro, it's his hometown club, and it's the biggest club in the world at the time, with Pepe's manager and Messi and all that lot. Why wouldn't he want to go there? Yeah, but the, this is the English culture, bro. If you leave a football club and go somewhere else, you're a snake. You know, he's, he's only doing it for the money. Oh, hold up a minute. They're all only doing it for the money because half of them don't even give a shit about the fucking football club. Yeah. Half of them, half of them couldn't even care less about the fans. What about the players now? What are they not doing it for the money? You winding right. me up? How many, times, how many times do you see yeah, clips doing the rounds on the internet of players just ignoring fans? And they've got their heads down, their earphones on, they're looking at their phone when they get off the coach. Yeah. I see the Leeds fans, uh, the Leeds fans waiting in, in a hotel a couple of months back and the player just walked straight past him, didn't even acknowledge him. Yeah, and the and the security guard, about fifty stone, went and stood in front of that little boy, so the player couldn't see him. Yeah, yeah? and the players get fucking embarrassing. Yeah, because they don't. Well, I've seen it first hand, bro. Yeah, I've seen it first hand. Yeah, where players get off a coach. Yeah, with their beats by Dre on. Yeah, and they're just looking straight down. Yeah, or they pretend they're on the phone. I've seen it. They don't they want don't, to. They don't you. care. They don't give a shit. They yeah. get in their paycheck. It's a draw for them. Do you know? Do you know what's embarrassing, right? All these players, yeah, they're calling our players, certain players like proper chels because he because Enzo stood up to Man. It's fucking embarrassing, you know. And it really is. Man's done more than this guy will ever do at Chelsea, man. You know, he's won us Champions League. Kai Havertz won us Champions League. How can you have an agenda on these players? None of these players that we bought have won the Champions League. And the only players that are in our squad right now that have won it. Won Palmer. it when we run it our second time, Thiago Silva, Chilwell, and Reese James. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and the only player you brought that's actually won it was Palmer. Well, yeah, but, but he, he won it with him. He didn't, and he won it with City. He didn't win it with you. Yeah, but he didn't participate, bruv. Oh, he played a few games. Yeah, he did play a few, played a few. So, but, you know, but, but that's it. Mm. You know? But this like, is the thing. This is why I rate Palmer, yeah. Right, because when he moved to you lot for 40 odd mil, 40 mil, 41 mil, I think he'd played 41 times for Man City. Right, and I was like, fucking hell, they paid a million quid a game. Yeah, I was like, that's wild. Yeah, bro, do you know why I rate him? Because he's gone into that football club and he instantly knew he was better than everyone. Yeah, and that shows how good Man City are, by the way, because he couldn't get in their fucking team properly. He couldn't get in their team week in, week out. Yeah, and he said, no, bollocks to this. He could have sat and won everything just being a bench player. Or coming up, with, well, he's probably getting the team now because Mahrez is gone, right? But then said, I, I keep thinking Lee's holding a coffee. <laughs> 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 yeah. But this is why I rate Palmer, yeah? He could have sat at Man City for the next 10 years, mate. Yeah? <laughs> and won everything. He's already won a treble. He could have won everything and just been a bit part player or maybe at some point, three, four years or whenever it may be, actually be a starting player week in, week out. Instead, he went bollocks to that. I want to play football every week. Yeah. Fair play to him. And he's gone into Chelsea. And like you said, you'll be 17th without his GA this season. Yeah. Yeah. And he knows he's the best player there. But that tells you how far behind Man City you are. He couldn't get in their team. And he's your best player. Like, come on. And and and, and the scary thing is, right, is that 
Palmer was a was a panic buy as well because it was like a deadline day signing, bruv. And the only <laughs> reason they bought him was because of Joe Shields, and Joe Shields knew about him. How bad does that tell you about the structure and the planning and the people in charge are all clueless? They're all mid. They need to get out of our football club because they're gutting us out. This low wage structure and all this nonsense. The it's, the model is the, is the root of the problem, and the model is put there by the owners. So they are to blame. You can blame the players all you want. The reality is, it's not their fault that they've been signed. Who's going to turn down signing for Chelsea as a, as a twenty eight month? years, hundred grand a week? Well, yeah, you're not going to turn it down. So hey, look, the look at Kaiseido. Kaiseido sort his whole generational fucking family out for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah, and you, and this guy's right. Big up, this guy's landing minerals, bro. This CFC underscore KDH landing the minerals. The whole chat is to be fair. Right, let me tell you this. Yeah, right. I get so fucking wound up when a player scores an equalising goal and they go and celebrate. And jump in the yeah, crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah, look at Bruno the other day against Liverpool, and he's giving it, um, against you lot, and he's giving it all of that when he put um, when he when he made it two two, and he's giving it all of that, and he's giving it all of this, yeah, and then he goes and loses the game, yeah. Palmer scores that equaliser, yeah, and just runs yeah, straight back cool. to the halfway line, yeah. yeah. And I said this on my watch long. I said that's elite, mate. Yeah, I fucking hate it when a player scores an equalising goal and gives it all of this or all of this, all of this, yeah. Go back to the halfway line, mate. It's 1-1. One, one. It's 2-2. Two, two. It's 3-3. Three, three. You ain't won the game. What are you giving that, it for? That, Lee, that game, because it's not that I don't rate Palmer. for their own personal gain on Insta and, and with yeah. their fanboys. I, I thought, I always thought Palmer was a, a like, nice talent, right? And he's dug us out of games. Like I said, we've been relegation. And that's excluding Everton's points deduction as well, you know. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so if, you, if they didn't get deducted points, I don't know, bro, do you know what I mean? But but what I'm saying with Cole Palmer is that game, at the United game, that for me was the moment I went, do you know what? This kid's got serious minerals. Mm. The mentality was right. Made the nick penalties off of everyone. Yeah. yeah and say, Yo, I'm and taking Luduke it. And tried to take the penalty off him and he was like, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, yeah, move. Who are you? Yeah, who are you? Yeah, I I take penalties. Back, I missed. He's got a hundred percent record. Yeah, yeah, yo, yo, give give me that man. Yeah, who are you? Yeah, I want to treble, bro. Shut this up. Is me, the reason but that's why you know the harmony in that team is also, yeah, right. These what? younger players think they're better than they are to the yeah. point where the best player at the club is getting fucking yo, I'm taking no fuck off. I'm Cole Palmer, mate. Yeah. yeah, who do you think you are trying to take the pen off of me? Yeah, I play for City, brother. I want everything. Yeah, and you, who are you? And you're trying to tell me I can't take the pen when I've scored every one I've taken. And do you know now, what, Lee? And that, that tells you that that dressing room is fucked. Yeah, of course it's fucked. And, and and that's my point, is that Cole Palmer's come from an elite dressing room, elite gaffer, the mm. benchmark through the roof. All right, you won treble, you've won multiple Premier Leagues, you've come from the DNA, the, the academy, you're learning the pet way, all right, so that they 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 mould you to get into the first team. And to be honest with you, I think at this moment in time he can be on that same ceiling as Phil Foden. All right, but he's not going to do it at Chelsea because Chelsea yeah. ain't got the structure for it. Where he, Chelsea's a, a, a just a temp temporary club for him, and he's going to bounce to a next club that's actually going to challenge. Him. Be, go he's to, looking at all these players in, him, in the squad going. Your shit. I see he's probably been on his phone to his agent. He's been on the phone to the agent already saying, get me back to City. Somehow, some way, get me somewhere, because this is no, shit. Bro, do you know where I see him going? I it's think fair. you lot are going to buy him. No, nah, man. I, we can't. We've got Starboy, bro. He, he can't no, get no, no. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Leg, Lego Ed knows him. Lego Ed knows him. Maybe, yeah. But and if I, we buy I him, he's going to know where we're where we real, playing him. He's, he's better than Martinelli for me. Yeah, but he don't play left wing. He don't play left, but I mean, Saka... He's number 10 or, or right. He's better than Saka. Not, yeah, Technically, on the ball, he's better than Saka. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's Saka's good. Saka's good. Yeah, he's a better finisher as well. Saka's good, yeah. But Saka's very limited at a lot of things. Yeah, like, but Saka will get the GA, yeah, which gives him a pass for a stinker. Well, yeah, he scored, the other night. he scored the other night. What a goal. And he's got that left foot shot on lock. That, that shot he does, yeah, where he drops the shot, bang. He's got that on lock and he's very good at rolling a defender. Yeah. And then getting that shot off. But he can't dribble. He's got no pace. Yeah. 
He doesn't need pace. He's yeah. got the brain. He's got the brain. But Cole, Cole Palmer wouldn't get in our team over Saka because Lego it ain't picking him, mate. Well, he's your star boy, isn't he? But yeah, he's, what, he's the poster boy of the whole club right now. Do you know? Do you know what Lee? And All he ain't right. dropping Odegaard because he's the captain, so he can't All play right. at ten. I want to bring. This He'll end up at Spurs. I guarantee he ends up at Spurs. Who? Palmer. He'll either end up at Spurs, right? Because Kulusevski's shit, right? Or Man City are buying back. Yeah, but if Man United. City don't buy him back, United. I would never go United. He yeah. supports United. Yeah, I don't think he'll ever go there. Look at the fucking state of him, bro. Well, let's see what happens. But listen, I want to bring this up. Imagine Cole Palmer, Man and Havertz, bruv. You're trying to trigger me. <laughs> I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm not triggering you because he triggers, triggers me. Bro. Trigger that's not what we should have. <laughs> All right, but I'm just saying that's what mm. we could have had. Within Kunku. It's about Kovacic as well. Nobody mentions Kovacic, by the way. Kovacic, yeah. they said, listen to what our fan base says. He's dead wood. All right. Kovacic is a steady 7 out of 10 every game. When do you see Kovacic drop a stinker? Very rarely. No. He's, he's, he doesn't do any, he's, he's one of them players, similar to Jorginho, different position, but similar to Jorginho, where if you haven't noticed him, he's not done nothing wrong. But he ain't going to be the all singing, all dancing, like, oh my God, he run the game. He just does his job. Just but I always said this about Cover. If Cover could get more assists and score goals, he'd be world class. And that's why Real Madrid sold him. Because I think he just doesn't have he doesn't have that end product. The middles, bruv. He's, he's but, just a, a in terms of, player that's very good at everything. Yeah, in terms of like passing, tempo, mm -hmm. press resistance, dribbling, uh getting stuck in, he's 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 world class in that. But it, as an all-rounder, what you want in the midfield, like, I think, yeah, that's why he never stayed at Real because of Real's midfield of Mudrick and Cruz. But, you know, um, I want to... I I want to let's be real. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't blame that. But I, I want to bring on to Havertz for Arsenal. Oh. We have to do it, Lee, because, you know... Let me go and get a beer, Johnny, because this uh, is going to be long. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, at he's getting charged up, guys. He's getting charged up for the minerals to land. Listen, every single one of you, smash to pieces that like button. Smash the subscribe button as well. And make sure you subscribe to Lee's channel, which is in the in the, in the the title. And it's Lee Reacts. All his links are down below in the description, bruv. Um, but let's keep landing it because this is going to be this is going to be good. It's an absolute disgrace that we sold our Champions League players to rival clubs. And I want to bring that up first before we get onto that discussion, Lee, because it's absolutely criminal that these clans have just shipped off Mount to United and shipped off Kai Havertz for the pound note to rivals to strengthen them. And whether we like you like it or not, Havertz, right now, <laughs> he's landing minerals, bruv. He has, he, he has. He's digging in, mate. He's getting... Hey, he's, I've, I've said he this, was I've, involved in that first goal. You do really... Yeah, he won the ball back. He won the ball back. Yeah. And you wouldn't have scored otherwise. It's simple as that. Yeah, he it was back. a good finish and all that, but it was to get to that point. He, he, um, against Brighton at the weekend as well, he was involved... He, well, he scored. He scored the second. Yeah. yeah, and it was funny because Saka was rolling around on the floor like he'd been snipered from Rose Ed. And then as soon as, <laughs> soon as Ben White laid it onto Jorginho... Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, Saka's looked up and jumped straight back up. It was like, yo, he's back. Yeah, it was like he was rolling around in agony on the floor, like he's dying. Yeah, and as soon as he realized we're in the box, he jumped straight back up. He's and this is how I know really he plays. cheats all yeah. the time, man. All every player in world football cheats. Everyone yeah. ball goes out for a corner, it's a goal kick. No, it's ours. It goes out for a throw, they run 20 yards further forward, then they run another five. Yeah, every time there's a corner, they try and take it out of the quadrant. Yeah, like it's bro, come on, every player cheats. Yeah, but what, is, what, are, we, what are you so saying in now? Terms of 29, I'm still not calling him his name yet. No, you said Everts, you said Everts on the last thing. I swear you did. Um, I'd be, yeah, I have to take a shot every time he's, I say his name. Go on, keep saying it then. <laughs> Listen, um, no, to be fair, right? I've said this, yeah. Be, be, I, let's be real. Let's not banter. Let's be real because no, no I'm going to keep he, it real, right? Because we yeah, land he, the minerals on it. You know what I'm saying? Lee yeah, minerals yeah, yeah. and that. Lee gunner minerals. Yeah. 
Bro, I've said, even without his goals, yeah, even without his goal um, against Brighton at the weekend, I thought he played all right. Yeah. And his best games, and I said this the other day, his best games, yeah, are when he's not scored. Yeah. Yeah. His best games are like, I'll give you an example, perfect example is we played Man City at the Etihad. If Odegaard weren't doing Odegaard type things in a big game, apart from Bayern, he played very well. Um, he was our best player. But even in that game, I said 29 played well. Yeah. Because Odegaard in that game against Bayern, yeah, run into the middle, into the D, Pauls, yeah, and he could have just done that little Ozil reverse pass and 29 was waiting there just to whip one top corner. It was wide open and, and Odegaard didn't see him. Against Man City, yeah, three times in that game, he ran off of the back. Perfect run, apart from uh, two out of the three were perfect. One was offside, I think. He would have been offside. Odegaard didn't release the ball quick enough. He was clean through if we dropped that ball first time. Yeah. He was clean through against City twice. Yeah, so like, Very I think the longer he's gone on this season, the better he's got. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, at the same time, we are not, we're, we're how do I word this? We're not playing to his strengths 100%. Yeah, because know, yeah. from what I've seen now in the last, what, three, three and a half months, yeah, of him playing up front when he played on the right wing against Brighton at the weekend, he was quality. Yeah, yeah he was absolutely quality before the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. before the goal, quality. That's his yeah. position. But at the same time, yeah, his best games have been when he's not scored. Yeah. yeah, he scored against Brentford. He was lucky he didn't get sent off in that game for a second, a second yellow for diving. He should have got done for diving against Bayern Munich in last uh, the other night. He should have got done for diving. Yeah, and it's like Arteta's obviously telling them dive. Otherwise, they ain't diving, let's be real. You know, Arteta's telling them that because Arteta would tell them, yo, I don't like my players diving, it's simulation, all that. He's obviously telling them to go down. Yeah. And that's what I don't like about some of some of these players. Yeah. Salah does it, Saka does it, he does the it. The game's gone soft like that. So oh, the yeah. Elliott penalty the other day was never a fucking penalty against Man United. Never in a million years. Yeah, he was going down before. But in terms of uh, 29, yeah, I think he's. He's definitely better in the attacking positions. I don't want to see that guy ever again in midfield. Yeah, and I even picked him to start. Yeah, somebody said to me the other night, who's um in the uh be yeah, it was the day before the buying game. What's your starting eleven? I picked him up front. Yeah, so come on, we we're landing it. Yeah, no, listen, <laughs> he ain't won nothing match, with respect, mate. You're, you're not wrong because you've actually identified that he is he is a he's a he's a, a right sided eight. That's what he actually is. That's where he was most Dominant at Leverkusen, at Chelsea he never got to play that position. Yeah, Leverkusen. I'm, somebody, I'm sorry to cut you off here. Yeah, there's a video on my channel when we were linked to him maybe four and a half years ago. Yeah, he wanted him, right? And I said, get him. He's class. Yeah. Somebody commented on that video the other day and said, "What are you saying now, mate?" Yeah, and I was like, "Hold up, you've took a video of me when he was at Leverkusen rating him." Yeah, yeah. And then I've seen him at Chelsea, fair enough, Champions League winner in that. Yeah. But then I'm not rating him off of the back of a three year Premier Lee, League career. Lee, don't listen. This, this is, is what they do. They like to rewrite history. At the a time lot, when I said he's class, he was class. A lot of a lot of a lot of the Arsenal lot have listened to Chelsea. So March Havertz and that. March Havertz when he scored in April. That that don't, you know, that don't that don't rate him, that have had an agenda on him. And they'll look as fucking ridiculous as the Arsenal lot look at. Uh, how, well, how wound up will you be if he wins the league this season? Absolutely rattled. What about if Man United win the cup with Mason Mount? I, I, well. Likewise, but I think, I think, I think. <laughs> what about City if Kovacic wins something? <laughs> Kovacic it's not Kovacic. looking good for you, lot. I can't lie. Bruv, bruv, listen. I never want to sell any of these players. All right, never. In no, fact, you'd I'm probably the only platform. I'm the only platform you can go back and anyone can clip me that never want to sell these players. And I've warned people when we sell them that we're going to be fucked. Oh, and you've said about 29 and, and about Mount. Yeah, Mount's not really why well, he's been injured. But... He's been injured, but trust me, he's going to be outstanding and he'll be played in his position. Remember, Mount was played out of position and he got 30 GA. Right, put Cole Palmer, for you, Cole Palmer out of position. He ain't getting 30 J because when he's gone as a 10, he's gone missing every game as he a has. 10 because he's not a 10. 
That's the difference with Mount. Mount's an all-phase, versatile player. Kai Havertz is a versatile player, but it affects your... He ain't, your he, ain't a left, he ain't a left-sided midfielder, mate. No chance. Who? Who? Havertz? 29. Yeah. When yeah, we no, played, no, when right. we played, But right. this, is why I get, this is why I've got the ump with the manager here. Right? People go, oh, just be happy with top. Just be happy with top. No, hold up. We were playing him and shoehorning him into left CM. Yeah? If we had not done that, we might be clear anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I agree yeah? with that. If yeah. we didn't do that, we might be clear. Because if he was up front instead of Eddie and Ketia, yeah, yeah, maybe we're clear. Remember, and if we Lee, else in the field. remember, Chelsea won the Champions League of him playing a false nine. And I want people to remember that he was 19 years old scoring that Champions League final. How many 19-year-olds can you name in those clutch moments doing things like that on the biggest stage in world football? You know, well, only, European only. football. You know what I'm saying? Probably only Messi, mate. <laughs> yeah, right. So this kid, this kid is a generational player, all right? And right now, as, as much as I hate to say it, he is going to ball at Arsenal. And he is balling in a different kind of way to what I know he's going to ball as. But he's he's still adjusting. And he's still getting used to the, the tactics, the way of playing, which is different. You've got also, people need to remember, Declan Rice has only come this season as well, bro. He's been class. He was right, shit the but, other night against but, Bayern. But wait, he's next season class. he's going to be better. And so will Kai. And this is what you've got to understand. And even though they're not adapted fully, you're still fighting for a title because your balance is there. You've got stability. Kai Havertz and Mason Mount Never had that at Chelsea. We didn't even have a proper DM. So this is the context, bruv. People love to throw genders, but the context and the, the, the reality situation, but they go, oh, but they sent us 12 last season. No, they didn't. The context of why we went 12 was we had a jellyfish potter. We had a squad of 48 players, new signings, injuries, so much shit going on. And you want to blame it on Mason Mount and Kai Havertz because it suits the agenda. It's a disgrace, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mason Mount, another one, he's going to ball out. People like United fans, you'll be muddied as well. And I'll be there to mud you. I'm mudding Arsenal fans as you, well. You crack me up every time Every time 29 plays well, yeah. That clip you put out cracks me up on Twitter. Yeah, because that's how I generally... I said that way before. Like, yeah. you got... So I knew he was signing for Arsenal before anyone knew. Mm. I knew that. Do you, do you know, know what's bad? We must, we must have some off-key deal with Chelsea because we get the deals done with Chelsea like that. No, yeah? It was like inside three days yeah, from deal. when the news broke, bang, he signed. Yeah, but that deal got done quick because... Because Edu Lego probably owned half the restaurant and that. We, we, we... <laughs> no, Lego couldn't believe he was available. He couldn't believe it. In fact, he wanted Mason Mount and Kai Havertz. Wow. Lego had wanted both. Bruv, if if you had Rice, Mount, and Havertz, that was my fucking. That's what I wanted at Chelsea. I wanted at Chelsea. And all these melts on platforms going, oh, 100 million for Declan Rice. That's too much money. Oh, go and get me this player. Shut up, you wrongers. Look at the state of you now, man. Why do you think they're going to go and book Declan Rice? He's a baller, bro. He's got pedigree. He's a baller. De Declan Rice, Declan Rice, yeah. Right. Massive player. He's been brilliant. Yeah, he was shocking against Bayern the other night. Yeah, he was shocking. Let Goretzka run off the back of him. That level, Lee. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like yeah. that was the biggest game he's ever played in. Yeah, I know he played in the Conference League final and won it in the Europa League semi in that. Yeah, but he's never played in that in, in a, against Bayern Munich. Yeah, and that was Odegaard's biggest game. Yeah, and I see Talksport interviewing people outside the ground in that, saying, "Oh yeah," but, and the, the presenter guy, he, I don't think he watched the game. And I'm pretty sure he never watched the game. Yeah, and I don't think he knows anything about football because he was going, oh, yeah, well, Odegaard, you know, he's played in these big games for Real Madrid. I was like, when was this then? Because he played 11 times for Real Madrid. When was this? When did when did Odegaard play for Madrid? He played more for us on loan before we signed him than he played for Madrid. Yeah, but Odegaard, yeah, Odegaard was absolutely quality the other night. Yeah, but, but he's world-class you in your team. Who do you them. put None as world-class? None of them. None of them. None of them. I'll tell you why they're not world class. Because every time the chips are down, they bottle it. Yeah, I've got them two centre backs here. Yeah? Like we've got a lot of players that are borderline world class. 
right? Borderline. Saliba and Gabriel are borderline world class. What, what yeah, Saka will never be world like? class. Saka will be a very good player and get loads of GA, but I don't ever see Saka ever being world class. Yeah, but Saliba and Gabriel could be. Yeah, Declan Rice could be. Yeah, then I look at who else we got there. How yeah, we've got. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. You've got, no. you got to have a shot. Come on, you've got to have a shot for it. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, well, I look at the rest of the team, and I'm just looking at it, thinking the goalkeeper is never going to be world class, right? Zinchenko's dog shit. Yeah, Ben White's never going to be world class, but he's a very good player. Yeah, he, he's been brilliant since about November. Even when we went on that one winning seven, he was still very good in that. Yeah, very good player. Right, but at the same time, yeah, people want to think Saka's world class, bro. The levels of Vinny Junior and Rodrigo, mate, yeah, they're world class. They turn up in the biggest games nine times out of ten. Yeah, and I know Saka scored the other night. Other than him scoring, what did he do apart from die for a penalty? He disappeared. He got. He got. Right, and people kept saying to me all the way in that build up for that week or the three days or two days before that game. Oh. Oh, Saka against Alfonso Davis. <laughs> and I was like, Alfonso Davis is shit, mate. Yeah, he can't defend. He's just a pace merchant. And because he's, he's Canadian and he's playing in the Bundesliga, Canadian in the Bundesliga is sexy, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit, oh, hipster, right? Bruv, he got him booked and scored, right? And scored. And then never took him on once after that. Yeah, so Alfonso Davis, he got him booked. He's now suspended for the next leg, right? Which is probably... A bad thing for us because he is awful. That awful. Alfonso Davis cannot defend, mate. Them fucking Bayern fans can't stand him. They only their, leave. Their defense is what lets them down because they've got all the minerals elsewhere. They've got all the experience and core mm. in the midfield and in the attack. But when it comes to their defense, that's where that's where they're vulnerable. But they yeah, got there's another, another thing as well. Right? Everyone in the build up to that from when the draw came out, <laughs> we're up against Eric Dyer. <laughs> Eric Dyer was probably the best centre back on the pitch. He was, yeah. He was. Yeah, and let's good. be real, he fucked up for the Saka goal. He was taking the knee, bro. I thought you had to do that before kickoff. Yeah. <laughs> what was he doing? He could have closed Saka down and blocked it. And instead, he just got lower and lower and lower. Yeah. Great goal. Fantastic. Lee, what about that? What about that back pass? That was a, the, the the was it Gabriel in the? I mean, how's that not a pen? And because how is the ref not take. getting? The ref uh, said to the Bayern players, it was a kid's mistake. Yeah. Right? This is not under fives football. This is elite level football. Bro, right? He knew what he was doing. Gabriel knew Mate. what he's doing. Yeah, but did you know what makes me laugh with it? Yeah, it's like, why would he do it? Like, because, why? Because he knows it's a young ref. These footballers try and take the piss. Trust me. Mate, I've, I've, seen, I've seen clips doing the rounds of women's game, yeah? In women's football where penalties have been given for that. Yeah, that's happened multiple times in the it women's game. Been and, been given. and it should have been a penalty. Because right? then you'd be 3-1 down, right? But let's let's have it right as well, yeah? Leroy Sane was clean through and Martin Odegaard bumps him, yeah? Right? If he flies on the floor, which he could have done, yeah, and fair play, Odegaard barged him and ended up getting the ball and it was like, fucking well done, Odegaard, yeah? Yeah. Right? Why was Odegaard the fur furthest man back in the first place is worrying. Right, yeah, and and twenty nine was back defending a lot in that game as well as like slide tackles and getting the ball and all this. Yeah, why are they the furthest two players back? Right, but if if that Odegaard one, if Sane throws himself to the floor, and I said this on my watch along with Matty and Ola, I said if he drops to the floor, Odegaard's getting straight red card here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, lucky. Yeah, and our fans want to talk about Saka. Yeah, it's not. Oh, and it was a pen. Hope. They hit the post as well, Lee. Uh, Coman. Right at the end. Coman. Yeah, Coman, Coman, right at the end. Yeah, yeah. and they want to, our fans want to talk about Saka not getting a pen. Bro, he and, died. And and our our clowns in the fan base are trying to mud Tommy T that won us Champions League. It's a disgrace. Out of disrespect. But bro, he he absolutely elite. showed levels against our manager. He's elite, bro. He's elite. Do you know how I know this, yeah? Because our manager was forced to make a change at half-time. Yeah. yeah. When I see Zinchenko come on, I, fucking, I was like, is he for real? Yeah, because he can't defend. And now this geezer's coming on and he can't defend. And now he's going up against Sane. When he took Leroy Sane off, I sat there and I said to the lads, I was like, he's done us a fucking favour here. Yeah. I said, why is he taking Sane off? I said, he's run us ragged. 
Literally run us straight. Bro, this is the best defence in the Premier League. You run through the whole team. Bro, they they actually cut you like a knife through butter, bro. Mm. Moments. Mate, Harry Kane's passing in that second half, mate. Elite, bro. Did you see that pass he made? It went like that. What a ball, bro. He's an unbelievable, bro. He's, He's wasting his whole class. career, mate. He's he should be well. one of the... He should be one of the most decorated footballers in world football. Yeah, in well, this I, era. I still stand by. I think by what decision the decision I think by decision the League Champions League, bruv. I think they'll win it. Who buy him? Yeah. Nah. I think they will. It, whoever wins out of the Madrid City game will go on and win it. I, 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 I'll be real. PSG were awful last night. I watched that. Mbappe yeah, stinker. that was pants. They're yeah, Mbappe stinker. Pants. Yeah, th th that game was like the Man United Liverpool game the other night. Oh, sorry, the Man United Chelsea game the other night, the 4 3. You know, it was just two mid teams, which made it exciting because nobody could keep the fucking ball and the quality was shit. Yeah, but it made for an entertaining game, innit? Yeah, Pedri because Barclay made that game. ball, though, didn't he? What a great ball that was by Pedri. Oh, first touch, he just come on the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, first touch, bang. Yeah, good finish from Rafinha as well. Yeah, but, mate, even, even the um, the first goal, that pass from Yamal. Bro, this kid's 17. Nobody mentions his age. Why? Because he's doing well. He's been their best player this season. This is the thing, right? There are young players, but what have they got around them, bruv? Yeah. Got bro, look at their centre-back. They've got a centre-back at Barca called Kubasi, yeah? Bro, he's fucking quality. He's 17. Yamal is their best player. He's 17. Yeah, but then Lewandowski, by the way, is washed. He is dusty. You see that header? Yeah, yeah, he's done. He's <laughs> it went done. the other way. He's six yeah. yards out and it went that way. You're like, what the fuck? He just he's got to say, that. I played for Barca and I've won yeah, a Yeah, won a title with Barca and this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, bro, yeah, I look, I look at these teams in Europe and I just think, like, we're going to the Allianz now, yeah? Right? This is going to be the biggest game in some of these players' careers. Bro, they There's went to your gaff with no supporters and put in a performance. Imagine what their grounds... I know, because we've beaten them on their home turf in the Champions League final. We'll drink them. Oh, here we go. Long, here bro. we go. <laughs> we see things they'll never see. Let's have it right. But to go there, they've got an unbelievable record at their ground, all right? And that's no walk in the park. And they've got and, Tommy Tugel. And they've got Tuber Tommy Tugel. You know what I'm saying? This gaffer, he's going to go United, bruv. I'm telling you. You reckon he'll be United? Mate. Yeah. And the reason I say that is no one knew and it never got leaked out, these directors that they brought in, the City one and this and that. They're doing their business behind closed doors, number one. Number two, Southgate's probably trying to get a new deal with England. So he's getting his name about. Potter has recently turned down Ajax. They ain't going for Potter, bruv, because the fan base won't allow it. All right. And the structure ain't there for Potter to succeed right now. So that's going to be a failure and a disaster, bruv. Plus, he's failed at Chelsea and United pressures United. Do you know what I'm saying? So, my thing is this too cool. He's going to go United, bruv. And I'll say it now don't shoot the minerals, man. Uh, it'd be fucking hilarious if they end up with Southgate, though. I can't lie. They won't. They won't get Southgate. Well, if they keep better. 10 hog. Right? See, so the thing is, if they win the cup this season, which is highly unlikely, right, they'll probably struggle against Coventry. Right? But if they win the cup, that's two cups in two years. Can they sack him? Yeah, because he's not their guy. That's their, that's their get out of jail. Yeah, because th that's the only get out of jail they've got because it's two oh, years, I think, I two think cups. They want, they, they want a, a, because of the structure they're building, they want to get the right manager. They want they want someone... To, as much as I like Ten Hag, and I did rate him at Ajax, he's never going to be able to implement what he's done at Ajax because that's generations of... He looks lost as well, mate. Every time he's on that side, he looks lost. Mate. Yeah, he's out of his debt, but he's not going to turn down Man United because of Man United. This is the problem you got when you go for these types of managers, these hipsters, all right? Mm. I don't put, I don't think Tenard is a hipster as such. I think it's a bit of a, a low ball. ball Let, let's just be real, though. He's got, a, he's got a record of bottling it. Yeah, he was the manager when Tottenham fucking come back and beat him and yeah. got to the Champions League final. Patrick from Lucas, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah, um, Lucas Moore, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I think Ten Hag He's not going to succeed there because a he's not going to have enough time to allow the structure to be implemented. You need you need a gaffer at United that is a winner, problem solver, elite, and manage big clubs, and can manage big clubs. Big and egos. Tuchel fits every single box, and tactically, Tuchel he's outdone Pep Guardiola, he's outdone the Veneer Merchant, he's outdone Lego Ed. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, we got robbed. Uh, looks like he's on a bit of the old snow, you know? He's on the mitzies, bro. He's on yeah, the mitzies so, turbos and that. Shall we? <laughs> what are we doing here? So, um, I, I think, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a given that he's going there, bruv. And United, if, if United supporters, I'm telling you now, if you get Tommy T, bruv, I'll fucking lose my With shit. Money Mace as well, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Wait. that's his player. You know, you know. Oh, yeah, and, and then he signs Cole Palmer, the Man United fan. <laughs> bruv, he said Mason Mount's the best player you're being pissed. <laughs> he said he's the best player he's worked with. Thomas Tuchel said Mason Mount's the best player to work with. So Money Mace, Tommy Tukes, and then they sign Cole Palmer for 85 mil. Yeah? You're dusted. You'll be relegated. Bruv, we're a feeder club now. Unless yeah. we protest and stop it. I've said this countless times. I'll keep saying it, Lee. I won't stop. You know what I'm saying? I keep landing the true facts. Every time we win, you not me more, bruv, well. I'm landing it. Yeah, but that's why people get onto me. Can't you just be happy? We won. Be it's happy been... about what? It pays it's 20 years about a fucking title. <laughs> yeah, win me something and I'll be happy. Give me a Do trophy. I'm happy, Lee. Yeah, if we go and win an FA Cup and we get Conference League, I'm not happy with that. You spent a billion. You're having me on, bruv. We should be in a title race. We should be. We should have spent a billion and got Galacticos with an elite gaffer, and we'd be challenging right up there. We'd be in Champions League football, mate. Mm. I That's don't the know. reality. If you want to, that... if you want to win, you turn it like that. Facts. No, that comment's funny. Arsenal are expected to investigate how Bayern Munich fans managed to get in the Emirates on Tuesday, and will ban any Arsenal fans who sold them tickets. Yeah, good one. I see a video of classy Arsenal punching up a Bayern Munich fan in the stadium the other night. Yeah, yeah, that's not gonna have, that's not gonna go too well over in Germany. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, good luck with that. In Newcastle and PSG, bruv. <laughs> Mate, there was there was about nine of them just taking pot shots at him. Yeah, and the stewards were like trying to calm it down. He's getting back. Yeah, and there was an old man. Yeah, he must have been about eighty standing next to this German guy that was just getting punches in his face, bruv. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, see it. Like, they're just swinging. Everyone's swinging at him. This little old man. He was so tiny, man. So old. He was like, he was so scared. I was like, fucking turn it in, mate. Yeah, turn it in. Yeah, but this is the thing. Yeah, right. They tried to, they tried to finesse it as well, Arsenal, by saying anyone who didn't have a membership for Arsenal before the 11th of March couldn't get a ticket for that game. And if you were going on ticket exchange, and and you want to send your season ticket for that game, yeah, to a ticket exchange member. Unless they've had it on the uh, before the 11th of March, you can't have it. Yeah, bro. How many Germans live in London? Exactly. How many Germans have got season tickets at Arsenal or have tickets at Arsenal or can get tickets? How many of them support Bayern? Because everyone in Germany pretty much supports Bayern. <laughs> yeah, my neighbour opposite probably supports Bayern. He's the Germans as well. Yeah, weird off key guy, bro. His Mrs. Peng though. I can't lie. I don't know how he's done that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he's done that, mate. He must be unlike a horse. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll have a, bit, have a few quid. <laughs> but, or both. Uh, yeah. Right. But check this. So most Germans support Bayern Munich. But now if you live in London, you've got a ticket for Arsenal, you, you're there because you're seeing two of your teams. You're seeing your, your, national, your team from your, national, like your own country and you've got a ticket for Arsenal. But you're an Arsenal fan as well. Yeah. yeah people are getting punched up. Like, fucking turn it in. Yeah, I went. I went to Real Madrid. Um, I know it was a, a friendly game. Yeah, um, legends versus um, Arsenal legends. But it was mixed. We all sat in with the Madrid fans. It was a right crack. Yeah. So I'm saying, seeing Sol Campbell and Raúl and all these man, Roberto Carlos and that. I went there because our nine was going to play, and he never fucking played, man. I was. Oh, no, no. I want to. I want to. I want to have a discussion about this quickly. Yeah. All right. For me, if you're talking, for me personally. Greatest player, greatest striker. He's 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 a tough one, but I'm putting you got Van Basten and R9 for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit controversial. <laughs> Go on, what are you gonna say, man? We'll see because the greatest say. striker is the one with the most goals, right? Not necessarily. Because I don't rate him as a player. Yeah, but he's got the most goals, Ronaldo. CR7. He's got CR7. the most goals. Yeah, but CR7's he... got the most goals. Yeah, so, but then when you look at Messi, Messi's the best player I've ever seen, and he's not far behind him on goals. And he weren't a striker. Yeah, see, but if we're me, talking to three strikers, see, this is why I always say Alan Shearer's the greatest striker ever in the Premier League. 
Yeah, because well, he's got the most goals. Got, yeah, but I can't just go. And by he that plays for shit teams. Let's be real. He played for Southampton and Newcastle. Yeah, Matt Letitia and was a baller. Matt Letitia was a baller. He played yeah, only Letizia, one of my favourite players. He won nothing. He won nothing. But listen, for me personally, you'd be considered the greatest if you don't win anything and your goals lead to fuck all, like Harry Kane. World class yeah. footballer, unbelievably gifted footballer, Harry Kane, mate. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. But if he don't win anything at the end of his career, yeah, can he be put in the goat category? Probably not, because how many how many legends, yeah, deemed legends, have a statue for winning fuck all? Well, R nine never won the Champions League, but no one gives a shit. Yeah, neither does like World Cup. Never won it either. I think it's like like eleven league titles in a row with about five different clubs, didn't they? But for, me, wanted... Lee, for me, Lee, if I'm picking who I want to watch play. Oh, yeah, I ain't paying to watch Ronaldo, mate, with CR7. I, 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 I'll be real. I'm I, I'm paying to watch R9. Mm. The shit I've seen this player do since he was 15, 16, and he's had two ligament injuries, the worst injuries you can have, and he still came back and landed down minerals, played at every big club. For me... Bro, he's Messi. a legend of Barca and Real Madrid. Yeah, and Messi hasn't done that. I don't care what anyone tells me. Messi's only, he's Barcelona. That's what he is. Yeah, but they were the biggest club in the world at the time. I know, but and look at the team up he in a big game. R9, for me, he's the best ever for me. R9 was unreal. And I'm blessed I've seen him, man. No, I've not seen him live. You yeah, know, he but... got applauded uh, at, by Old Trafford. Yeah, yeah, scored a hat trick, didn't he? The whole stadium yeah. stood up. Yeah, fuck him. He absolutely cool. Even, even Jose Marino said he's he's the he's a phenomenal phenomenal. Did, did you see that clip? I see it on Insta yesterday. Maybe it was today, yesterday or today, where Jose said, Yeah, he, he was he, he'd come to training, you know, but he wasn't training as in like intense, 100 percent mat and focused. He was just coming like have a kickabout with his mates, just come from the local or whatever, and he's just coming up a kickabout. Levels above everyone. Yeah. So it was unbelievable. Yeah, and he was, and he was dusted by twenty five, really, wasn't he? No, uh, them them ligament injuries killed him, mate. Yeah, because we'd be talking about the best player ever. Yeah, ever. Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho is a shout as well. Ronaldinho, oh, yeah, 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 but that's different, mm. position. different yeah. position. Yeah, Ronaldinho's like, first goal for Barca, bro. Yeah, was fucking insane. He picks the ball up inside zone half, dribbles around four, and slapped it thirty five yards on the side of the bar, and just looked around like, yo, I've landed at Barca, bro. <laughs> but what yeah. what are we saying about? His goal against you lot, against Petr Cech and JT and all that, where he was just waving the foot over the ball. And For me, I don't think that was a joke. Johan Cruyff, unbelievable player. Mm. Right? Maradona, Messi and Ronaldinho. Those four, up there all day long. Mm. Yeah, I agree. 100%. I'm, I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen CR Seven live. Yeah, and I remember CR Seven fucking cooked Arsenal, mate. When he was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, listen, Ronaldo yeah. is CR7 Ronaldo is... after his second or third year at Madrid. Yeah, he went. He he just changed to chase Messi, and that tells you how good Messi is. He just wanted to compete with Messi for goals. Look how, look why how I look Messi is the best. Messi is the best player I've seen. Like, now, bro. Like, look how washed the players we have now are compared to that. Well, man, you see, you see when you watch football now, yeah, and you just see these dead wingers like Brennan Johnson and Werner, yeah, just smashing the ball off of the first man for a corner because they've got no tech to take the man on, yeah. And we've sat there and watched Zidane, Ronaldinho, Figo, Steve McManaman. Well, that guy's got the freedom of fucking Madrid. Steve McManaman is a Madrid legend. They love him, mate. Gareth yeah. Bale, fucking baller, he is Bale. running off the pitch and all of that. Yeah. Bicycle Bale. kicking the Champions League final. Mate, Zidane's bro. fucking goal against Leverkusen, bruv. We've seen the best of the best, yeah. Best of the best, yeah. Big up Georgie Best, yeah. Come on, 20 pints of lager and still pissed on anyone. Yeah, let me tell you a quick story about George Best, yeah. He had a bet with one of his of teammates. Course, how can we forget George Best? Like, he had a bet with one of his teammates, yeah, that he would only touch the ball in the whole game with his left foot. Yeah, and if he touched it with his right foot, he had, he lost the bet. I can't remember what the bet was. I remember in the story years ago. Yeah, the whole game he only touched the ball with the left foot. <laughs> yeah, I think he twice in that game as well. <laughs> right, there's another one. Right, I think I think they were playing Fulham. George Best was playing against Fulham. You know when the referee starts counting the players on the pitch for kickoff. Yeah, United only had ten men on the pitch. George Best comes running through, pulling his shorts up, tucking his shirt in, and all that. Yeah, right, absolutely smashed off his nut. 
Yeah, like literally. Yeah, scored twice in the first half, banged a couple of brasses at half time, done a shot of whiskey and all that. Yeah, went out in the second half and fucking completed his hat trick. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Fulham. It might not be Fulham, but I'm pretty sure it was Fulham. He, yeah, he bro, just this guy, drunk. He just this guy drunk. would nutmeg people, yeah, for fun. Yeah, and then go, oh, that was easy. So instead of going clean through on goal, we're going nutmeg them all again and then go clean through on goal. Like, fucking joke of a player. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Stoichkov and Hadji ballers as well. Come oh, on. yeah, Hadji, man. Hadji. Whoa. Some of the goals Stoichkov and Hadji scored were a fucking piss take, bro. Rude Hullet. Bro, we've seen the best, man. Pirlo, come on, man. Like, we've seen proper Burkham. Like, for me, yeah, when I when I name my best ever Premier League players, yeah, that I've seen, yeah, I always go Burkham. Yeah, Zola, Cantona. Yeah, them three. Yeah, people go, oh, how come you can't put this player in? No, 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 bro. Yeah, you don't even know about how good Zola was, bro. Like, Zola was, mate. Bro, Fergie, I, was, I see a clip the other week, yeah, where Fergie's sitting there going, I fucking hated him. Hated him. And the, the guy sitting interviewing him goes, why did you hate him? Because he always played with a smile on his face. He comes to Old Trafford smiling while he's playing football. He goes, why are you smiling? You're at Old Trafford. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like I hated him because of that. He goes, yeah. but what a player. He goes, R Romario, and then going, Romario hmm. as well. I forgot to mention, and I've seen the chat. I remember Romario, the World Cup when they did all of this one. Special, <laughs> special, special player, Romario. Oh, There's I'm a clip where he says, I'm better than him. I'm better than him. I'm better than him. When he brought up Messi. I think oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. it. <laughs> he, said, he said Pele was better than him. Mm. Uh, and Messi, oh, right? No, 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 it was, it was um, R Ronaldo, yeah, R9, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was like, I'm better than him, better than him. He was just sitting there chilling, like, I'm better than him, yeah. I was yeah. better than him, better but than he him. What? He what? He actually he was. was. He actually was. This is the thing, back in the day, yeah, because well, you would have grown up watching this as well, yeah, fucking uh, Gazetta della Sport. Yeah, fucking Channel 4 football, bruv, Italian yeah, football, bruv. bruv, every weekend, relentless, <laughs> bruv. Yeah, James Rich Richardson and that, yeah, just sitting there, just chilling, bruv. And we're like, yo, we get to see all the goats, bruv. Batistut is one of the greatest strikers I've ever seen. Oh, he was yeah. incredible. Unbelievable. Yeah, he bro. fucking ruined us at Wembley. When we were playing our Champions League games at Wembley, and he played for, for Fiorentina at the time, he absolutely killed us at Wembley. Like... <laughs> but do you know the only player I've seen that's very, very similar to him? Yeah, is Aguero. Yeah, him and Aguero are fucking very similar. Yeah, Aguero's not as good as him, but Aguero, another fucking great player. Yeah, but Batistuta was sick. Oh, man, I was begging to sign Aguero from Atletico. I was going nuts, bruv. I was going, we've got to sign this player, we've got to sign this player, and we ended up signing Fernando Torres, which obviously ended up great because we won our, uh, our Champions League, but uh, like yeah, so Aguero, bruv. Like in New Camp, didn't it? Yeah. And Gary JT going, got sent oh, off, didn't he? Who did, who did JT fucking kick in or need somebody jt got sent off didn't he oh yeah he got sent off and then to camp new in the first half and then we're mm. like pff, two nil down and then who, um, who was it that fucking dinked the goalkeeper your midfielder uh, lampard played that uh blind pass if you like unbelievable mm. sister ramirez ramirez, ramirez who, and he just scooped it over the keeper what he the just fuck dinked it and it was my bruv Mate, i was watching that with a load of chelsea fans here pals of mine back in england yeah when uh when you got through when Messi, because Messi missed a penalty, didn't he? In the second yeah, leg, he did, yeah, 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 or at the bridge, he missed it on the first leg. He missed a penalty in one of them, yeah, right. When he missed that penalty, I fucking walked out of the house. I was like, "Fuck you, you fucking lucky bastard, you're gonna win it." Yeah, and they were like, "Oh, come round to us for the fucking final." I was like, "Fuck off, I ain't coming to yours for the final." And then look at the final, man. Look at the final as well, bro. Like, come um, Didier Drogba, man. That fucking header was a joke. Yeah, unbelievable. But you know what's mad about Bayern Munich, yeah? I was thinking this earlier. They've won six Champions Leagues, yeah? And they have literally been done. Yeah, literally been done by Man United, United and yeah. you lot. And us, yeah. I don't know yeah. if they've ever lost another final. I can't remember, but... Bro, but we, had, we had them all... I don't, know, I don't know about United, the United game, but I know for sure we had them all crying. Like, crying. Because that... Man, you got to understand, that was, was in their home ground. There's a difference. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. That was yeah, their home ground in front of their supporters, man. <laughs> Didi Matter. Torres won the Torres won the corner. Credit mm. to Torres. And then one matter assisted Didier with the clutch header. Bro, bro. What the head head bro. Clutch. I fucking hated that guy when he played for you lot, man. He always dunked on us every single yeah, time Didier we played. A, sport, Didier's, bro, there's no striker like Didier Dropper now. That that League Cup final, yeah, where we played the kids, Theo Walcott scored. 
Yeah, it was his first goal for Arsenal. Yeah, and I was like, what's Wenger doing? Why is he playing all these kids, bruv? Yeah, and we, we went one nil up and I was like, oh, we might do him. Yeah, and then Didier Drogba just bullied Senderos yeah. two goals, bang, bang. Bro, Crazy. Didier Drogba's unbelievable, bruv. Here but look, but look, look at the fucking, look, look all these names in the chat that people are putting in. They're like, bro, like, it is mad. Yeah, oh. Alan Shearer in this era, yeah, would be the best striker on the planet. Yeah, I think Alan Harry Shearer. Kane's the closest to Alan Shearer. I, th I think Kane's better than Shearer. Yeah. Yeah, technically. In, in terms of technical ability, but yeah, in terms yeah, of technical, technical yeah. Him, yeah, playing for shit teams. Yeah, because he did, let's be real, he played for Southampton, Blackburn, fair enough, they won the league, him and Sutton up front. Yeah. yeah and, and Sherwood in midfield and all that. Went down Gleesh there, mate, I think he was, wasn't he? Yeah, and they had Colin Hendry with a big fucking curly perm and that. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah I remember Colin Hendry, yeah. yeah. And, but Dal Cleish, yeah, he was the... He but was I think the... overall, Harry Kane's a better footballer. Yeah, but Alan Shearer was unreal, mate. Yeah, like, I remember when we won the league at um, White Hart Lane, 04. They, uh, Newcastle, yeah, dead celebration, wasn't it? Fucking shit celebration. Every goal the same. Just mate, he's got, he's got a statue outside Newcastle like that. That's the, yeah, that's the statue. What like, could it be? What else are you gonna be like? <laughs> when we um when we when we won the league at White Hart Lane in 04, right? You lot played Newcastle the game uh, the first kickoff on the Super Sunday, and then we were playing Spurs. Alan Shearer scored a 35 yard fucking volley against you lot, which meant we only needed to get a draw at White Hart Lane. Yeah. So I've always got a soft spot for Shearer, bro, because that goal, yeah. Anyone who ain't seen that goal, right? Alan Shearer versus Chelsea, 2004. What a goal, bro! Harry Kane don't score goals like that. No. Yeah, Harry Kane's unbelievably. You know, I think Harry Kane's a better footballer. Yeah, but Alan, Alan Shearer, Harry Kane's never scored a goal like that. Yeah, and Shearer used to slap him all the time, bro. Yeah, any penalty, bang, hundred mile now is in. Yeah, whereas Kane's a little bit more. He'll whip them, but they. I know always like a penalty to go side netting when it goes in because that's when you know you fucking practice them hours on the training ground. Yeah, you ain't missing. Kane very rarely misses a penalty. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, I think good. I think Rude Hullet was their manager. I think you might be right. Yeah, yeah, Hullet, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hullet for me, what a player, bruv. Man. Bro, he was world class in three positions. Yeah, yeah, he was he was so well class built, technical mm. ability, goals, everything, man. He had everything. Like, yeah, he, he was the complete midfielder. He also made a great point. About these clowns, muddy. I'm listening. I need to piss though, man. And, yeah, I'll be afraid. Forty seconds. And he said, uh, oh, I'll, "I'll wait till you come back." Then smash the likes up, yo de puta. Yeah, I'll be forty <laughs> seconds. Let's have it right. All right, guys, smash the like button. Every single one of you, smash the like button. What an elite stream, bruv. Minerals are landing everywhere, bruv. Elite minerals and football talk, bruv. Big time. You know what I'm saying? We don't talk about the Walker's Crisp Merchant. Let's have it right. Tap-in Merchant. Yeah. Goal hanger. Let's have it right. Rude Hullet, bruv. Unbelievable. Also, Modric. Modric, what a player. I love Modric, man. Modric is unreal. Unreal. What I would have done, I wish we got him when Roman had him on his yacht. And he was ready to sign for Chelsea for 40 odd million or 50 million at that time. If we'd signed Modric, can you imagine, bruv? I think we would have won more Champions Leagues. I'll be real. Mate, do, do you know what? He's probably one of the. Like, you see, when players are hated, like Bruno Fernandes is hated, like everyone hates him. Universally, everyone hates him. Even United fans hate him, yeah? Is there any football fan on the planet that hates Luka Modric? No, he's loved. Why? Because he's fucking unbelievable, mate. He's just a yeah? wonderful and player. He's not one of them. He's not a dirty, horrible, nasty. No, he's just, he's all just, the time. you know what it is? He Your plays the, the, the game, the, the beautiful game, bruv. He's, yeah. he's just, he's just elite. He's just class. And, and yeah. the way he plays aesthetically watching him, bruv, that assist in front of my eyeballs that he did against, uh, well, that he assisted Ben, was it Benzema? It was Benzema, bruv. That assist, yeah, yeah. bruv. Another huge. bad boy fucking player. <laughs> oh, Benzema as well. Oh, that, guy, that guy took a back seat for, for Ronaldo to shine. Yeah. And, and was, was bro, you don't stay right. at Real Madrid for 13 years if you're shit. Let's just be real with it. Yeah. yeah? Like, because they'll bin you. They they spot a dud real quick, bro. He was playing out on the left to accommodate Ronaldo. Yeah. 
And then all of a sudden he bagged 30 goals. Yeah, won a Ballon d'Or and all this. And everyone's going, oh, what a player. No, he's always been that good. Yeah, but he's humble enough with it to know that, yo, I'll just play my game over here and let Ronaldo take all the limelight because he wants all the limelight. Benzema don't want the limelight, bro. And that's no. why, yeah, players like Luka Modric and Benzema will always be universally loved. Yeah, because they don't want to give it all this. They don't chat shit. They're very rarely on TV or in the media. Yeah, but and when they play... PR merchants. When, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. When they play... It's just pure football, and it's a throwback Modric, to what we grew up on, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Modric, Modric is like the modern day version of all the footballers we have been bringing up mm. just about ten minutes ago. Of like, yeah, uh, like Harry Kaka, Kaka, and, and, yeah, Kaka, yeah, like he's, 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 top, he's that ill, can he? Even mm. though he's in this generation, like he's fading out now, but he's still balling, bro. He's still landing. Yeah, he's still bro, he came off the bench the other week, but and he's been on the bench a lot this season, yeah. Right, that's how good their fucking team is. Him and Camavinga were sat on the bench the other week. Right, he came off the bench against Sevilla. Right, he gets the ball. He was on the pitch like three minutes, bro. Yeah, he gets the ball, drops the shoulder, sends the defender to the shop for milk. Yeah, and just whip one straight in the top. I was like, fucking, this guy's a joke. He's been on the pitch two minutes, three minutes. Like, Clarence Sadel for another one. Yeah, bro. Honestly, man, some of these players are just ridiculously good. Yeah, but you look at this area, yeah, and we're, we're, we're fucking being told to hype up Odegaard and Garnacho and Jackson, like fucking turn it in. Yeah, what are we doing here? Yeah, and these players, right? You see these players like that we're, we've all named, yeah? Right? They must be fucking fuming the amount of money these players now are getting paid because well, they, yeah. they, they couldn't even polish their boots back in the day, mate. They wouldn't even be a YTS, some of these players now. Listen, yeah, and they're they sitting there. Roy Keane, that's why Roy Keane's so on it, bruv, yeah, because Roy Keane knows these players are shit in this area, and they're nicking more money than he was, and he was a fucking top baller, Roy Keane. Oh, Roy Keane was a fucking general, bruv. Proper general, bruv. What a player. Remember when he went home from the World Cup? He told Mick McCarthy, fuck himself. Yeah, yeah. He, fucking, <laughs> he doesn't give a shit, bruv. He's, he's, he fell out with Fergie as well, man. Big time. Yeah, he called them all out. I watched, I watched something the other week, yeah? I think it might have been the overlap. Gary Neville's podcast with him and writing all that, yeah? And he, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, and he said, um, he said, yeah, what happened was I did a I did a thing and I called all the players out. I was calling out Nicky Butt, I was calling out Scolzi, I was calling out fucking everyone, yeah? He goes, next thing, yeah, the manager calls me into the dressing room, yeah, in front of the whole squad, yeah, and then starts playing it <laughs> in front of the whole squad. That's yeah? legendary, bro. But, and then he started rah, 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 kicking off. You know what Fergie was like? Fucking, he was a nutter, bro, back in the day. Yeah. Rah, rah, rah. He goes, yep. Yeah. And I was told straight away, you'd never play for Man United again. And he was the captain. Yeah, yeah I know Where's captain. Standards yeah. Gone? Where's them standards gone in this fucking era, mate? He got, gone, rid, of he got, buried, rid, of he got rid of Beckham because he thought he was doing too much media stuff. And he, he was. was no, stuff. actually, he found out. He found out that he was he was talking to Real Madrid at that time. And that sent him off the edge. Because Real Madrid, first, when they signed him, yeah, yeah they made knew. more money off of Beckham seven on the back of just like because the shirt was a shirt deal with Adidas, whoever it was. Yeah, so you got the money. But if you get a name and number on the back, the club get every penny of that. They made more money off of seven Beckham, yeah, than they paid for him <laughs> on the opening day. <laughs> yeah, that's how big Beckham was. Yeah, it's fucking Beckham, insane. Beckham was a superstar, you know, like money making machine um, which is also another side and a, a trigger point in football that is why we got all this shit now if i'm being yeah, real he was one of the first to do it as well he, yeah, he was he realized he could make more money than everyone yeah. else and he mm. was more interested and he got with posh spice and all that and got in like the obvious one of the fucking lot mate yeah <laughs> well actually i don't know sporty, sporty spice looks all right now have you seen her jeez Sp yes, who? sporty, sporty spice back in the day. All right, matey, I'm being serious. Yeah, everyone was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't think much to yours, mate. Yeah, she looks all right now, really. Not a slosh pot wet look alike, or oh, yeah, baby spice was always the one, though. I can't lie, <laughs> she doesn't change. She, she still She's looks... never aged, man. I swear, damn, she still looks the same as when she was yeah. younger. It's like a yeah. doll, it's like a yeah, doll. proper little Barbie doll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was Beckham 23. I'm lying. It weren't Beckham. Yeah, it was. It was uh, because that was Jordan's number. He took Jordan's number, didn't mm -hmm. he? For for Real Madrid. Um, but, but he was, seven, was him and Ronaldinho were the first two, really. Yeah, that started all this marketing side of stuff. 
Yeah, yeah Ronaldinho started, as well. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Ronaldinho. Yeah, Beckham started it with, um, on the uh, documentary he did, the Beckham documentary. He said that he got paid 50 grand from Adidas to like do a photo shoot for the Predator boots. Yeah, yeah. And he said he went and spent the whole 50 grand on a BMW M3. Yeah. <laughs> and he was living paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> like, that's, what he, that's what he's doing. And then he turned it into a business. Also, you've got to remember back then, like, do you remember that elite Nike advert with Ronaldo and all the players? Do you remember that old school? What oh, that was proper. That was that proper. Was, that was probably one of the best adverts ever, bro. You know? Um, that was when he, football was football, though, isn't it? Like, even yeah, though it was yeah. an advert, yeah, it went marketing, 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 and PR. It was just like, these are top ballers. You don't give a shit if they're doing a marketing thing. Yeah? No, because they were delivering and they they, yeah. they were just playing football as it should be played. Like you paid, that's what you paid your money for to watch them. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like they, they did things on the pitch. Like, I remember watching Azard, bruv. Azard Zola, you know, that's what you pay your money for, bruv, because these right. players do things that you just can't believe that they're doing. It's not behind me. I've seen Alexis Sanchez as well, Sesk. Do you know what I'm saying? It was fucking Thomas Just was Fabregas for Chelsea was ridiculous as well. Oh, mate, fucking devastated. We never signed him back, bro. Ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, yeah, even the Pepsi adverts. Yeah, come on, Craig. The Pepsi adverts as well, bro. <laughs> yeah. The Pepsi, Pepsi adverts were goaded. Yeah. yeah. Old school. Even MJ got in on the Pepsi adverts, bro. Yeah, yeah. Burnt and all that. Well, right, he had his finger in every other fucking pie, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he got a statue outside Fulham. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, if only they knew. Oh, <laughs> now, Fabregas, when we when we went to buy Alexis, uh, apparently Cesc phoned up Benga and said, Are you in for me? And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm in for Alexis Sanchez, mate. Yeah? And we had first refusal on him. Yeah, you right? did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He played his first season at Barca. He played in a false nine. Yeah, and scored about fucking 20-odd goals and about 20-odd assists. Yeah, so it was, like, it was a bit of a surprise at that point when Barcelona were getting rid of him a few years later. It was like, flipping hell, mate. After you begged and begged and begged to get him there, putting a the shirt on at the World Cup and all of that, do you remember? Yeah, fucking uh, Pepe Reina and all them, PK and all that. Yeah, putting the shirt on him. And then you bin him three years later. I was devastated. We had Ramsey and Ozil at that point. And Wenger apparently said, no, you're hampered there. Fucking, no, nah, shut up, man. Cesc's one of the best players we ever had. Unbelievable baller, man. Do you know Do you know what, what is, uh, Lee? I get so... I, 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 it's the first time I've spoken about football, footballers, like mm. old school, like the good times, like because I don't get to speak about it now. It's all just about what the what the problem is at Chelsea, the issue at Chelsea. Like you can't talk about football at Chelsea anymore. It's 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 way deeper than that. It's more deep rooted than that. It's it's more severe. That's because you give a shit. That's because you give a shit, bro. Yeah, yeah I don't give a shit. Yet. They just think you're negative. No, you've seen proper Chelsea. Yeah, and yeah. this is the thing. Most of these people that are rival fans of Chelsea, they'll go, oh, you were nothing until the Brunvich rocked up. Shut up. You finished four points off fucking top when, man, you did a treble. Yeah. yeah? Three-way title race. And they're, and they're gassing this up. Oh, this is the greatest title race ever in the Prem. No, it ain't. Yeah? Man United did a treble that season. That, that title race went to the final day of the season. Yeah? And that was a free alls title race. Yeah, and Chelsea then had Zoda and all that lot in the team. Like, John said, fucking Zoda, man. Unbelievable. Fergie, Fergie admitted, he says, I never do it with players, but Zola, I had to put a man on him. I had to do everything in my power. Yeah. I think he said two men, in fact, on Zola to stop Zola. It's a shame yeah. I can't play the tip because I could find it, yeah, where he's saying I fucking hated him. Yeah, he always like he was always smiling when he come to Old Trafford. Nobody smiled when they come to Old Trafford. Yeah, but yeah, Zola was... And it showed a load of clips of him against you lot, yeah? Um, sorry, against Man United, yeah? Where he's just literally back heel, nutmegs, everything, going around three players. They put three on, he's going around them all. Then he scored the gold in the cup game, yeah? Uh, where he just tapped it in the bottom corner. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. fucking, I think you that was at Old Trafford and he won 1-0. Yeah. yeah? That, that, you know, Zola, yeah, um, is the player that made me fall in love with, um, not Chelsea, because I was Chelsea, but made me fall in love even more like with football and what watching that player bruv mm. you know the low Burkham, of gravity oh Burkamp was ridiculous I mean that that goal against Newcastle was just rumor has it Dabizas is still spinning bruv but the thing <laughs> is he actually came out Dennis and said I knew exactly what I was gonna do like people think it was a fluke and it weren't never, bruv. it was never that, that, and the thing is, if that was a fluke and, and that was the only goal, yeah, like 
top class goal he'd ever scored. You'd go, okay, fair enough. He flew. He did it. the one for uh, uh, was it um, Holland? That goal for Holland, bruv. Yep, against Argentina. Yeah, bruv. Yeah. No, the commentary for that's elite. Frank de Boer, 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 the Premier League, even when the Premier League, like because the Premier League now is shit, yeah, and even the Spanish League when it was good, when it was uh, Messi, Ronaldo, and all, and then Falcao at Atleti and all that, yeah. Falcao. Oh, so that Italian really league's always good. been the best league ever. Yeah. yeah, that era, right? And do you know what the mad thing with Burkham? I remember the day he signed, right? And I came home, I came home from school, and this is before we had social media and all this shit, yeah, right? And it was Teletext, page 301 or 302 or whatever on Teletext. And I got home. Well, my dad said to me, he goes, Arsenal was signed Dennis Bergkamp. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, like, no, Arsenal was signed Dennis Bergkamp. I said, no, nah, no, nah, they ain't. Yeah. And he showed me the teletext page. Arsenal was signed. I didn't believe it. And then it came on the, the news in the evening. Arsenal was signed Dennis Bergkamp. I was like, we signed Dennis Bergkamp, bro. He finished second and third in the Ballon d'Or before we signed him. That's how fucking good he was, bro. And apparently he was a flopper in there. Get out of here, man. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Same with Henri, yeah. Everyone says Thierry Henry was a flop at Juve. He weren't. He weren't a flop at Juve. Yeah, people think he was a flop at Juve. One of the best players we've seen that gets no credit for us whatsoever is Nicholas Anelka. Yeah. Anelka. He played what. for United, he played for Liverpool, he played for yeah. Bolton. He, played for, he poured himself out. Real Madrid yeah. everywhere, bruv. But he was I want to play Nicholas Anelka, bruv. Do you know what? Ice cold in front of goal, bro. Ice his first goal was against Man United on his debut, bro. I thought, well, maybe it wasn't his debut, but his first goal was in 3-2 against United. Yeah. Um, fucking uh, Fiera scored a fucking slap. He slapped it. Yeah. And it, it was curling. It must have curled about 30 yards. Yeah. But I hit the underside of the bar and went in. Yeah. I think um, I think Beckham might. Is it Beckham? Maybe Beckham scored that night. Yeah. And then David Platt scored the winner. Yeah, David Platt, another great player. Like, mad, underrated. Nobody ever mentions him at this football club. And this is the thing, yeah. This younger generation, yeah, they do not give a shit about the history, bro. No. Yeah, they just they look at their players and they can rush now. Yeah, no, look at the I players you're mentioning. That outly as well. I want to make that clear. Like, they, they, they don't even care about the heritage. So what makes you think all these players are going to care about the heritage? Because there's nothing left mm. of our DNA and heritage for to pass down to these players because it's all been gutted out. So yeah. they're trying to create their own culture of... Well, what? Clown Lake? Jog on, man. Get in the bin. All right, that, that's a good bin. comment as well from Chris C. Yeah, Burra had Burra had Ravinelli, Janino, and Mendieta. Gaisca Mendieta, bruv. Bad boy. Oh, yeah, Ravinelli, bruv. You used Gineo, to go Ravinelli. Yeah, yeah, bruv, yeah. Ravinelli was born with grey hair. I'm sw I swear down, he was born with grey hair, bruv. That guy had grey hair. People started feet. dyeing their hair like that to look like him. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But look at the Chelsea. Look at Chelsea. Yeah? You had Viali, you had Hullet, yeah, Zola. Bro. Oh, fuck yes, I. Like, we've had yes, uh, 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 Leboeuf, great player. Frank Leboeuf, another bad boy. Yeah, you've CD had some... head. We called him CD head. But even yeah. look at look at look at Bolton. Yeah, Bolton had Yuri Jorkaev. Yeah, JJ Okocha. Yeah, Ivan Campo, bro. Good Johnson, bro. Yeah. Good Johnson, baller. Right, the, the best partnership I've ever seen Chelsea have was Hasselbank good Johnson. Thank you, Johnson. Yeah. That was a fucking disgrace, mate. But do you know what? That was in the era where we beat you every time, no matter what. Yeah, and then Wayne Bridge done us at our ground, yeah, and then yeah, the tide yeah. turned, didn't it? Right. Yeah. But we, we done you every them. time, even with them. Hassel, I remember a cup game. Yeah, a cup game we played against you. Hasselbank scored, I think. Yeah, and then we went on and won the game. Antonio Reyes, R.I.P. Reyes, man, bad boy footballer. Yeah. His first two goals for Arsenal were against you lot. Yeah, it was. I remember them very clearly. Yeah. That I fucking think. screamer he scored, bro. Yeah, he scored a screamer, oh. bro. I'll, I'll tell you the one that done me in was that fucking Winterburn one he scored, man. Oh, the screamer. Yeah, 30 he yards. He never scores goals like that, bro. And he scores that. I was fucking right. Hey, Silvino did one from there. Or was it for Van Bronckel? I think Silvino and Van Bronckel <laughs> both done one from there. Both as well. of them have done it, I think. Both. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. Like, we, we went from that era where, like, we were always like, we were losing to Arsenal, and then we just fucking can't. And then Wayne Bridge happened. I think we subbed off Tony Ogg. And that was it. The rest is history. Yeah. As soon as Wayne Bridge scored that goal against us, that was like, yo, the tides turned. And then we couldn't beat you for about 20-odd games. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah, and it was it was crazy. But yeah, then that era, man. That that was the best Premier League era. 
like from from the mid nineties. But probably late nineties. You're, yeah, you're talking late nineties like, to 2010, 13. Yeah, that, that is the the greatest era of football, especially Premier League. For Premier League, like yeah, Premier League, you had Arsenal, best. United, Chelsea. It was like. It was it was just mad, bro. Leeds as well. Leeds United were Leeds made were there. Look how far they fell. Leeds United Leeds. got to a Champions League semi with fucking David O'Leary. Yeah, who's still Lee to this Lee day. Boya, Harry Kill, Ian Hart. Yeah, fucking they, they had, had some bad. Bank, didn't they? They had Viduka. Viduka. Yeah, um, Lucas Radabe. Yeah, they had some fucking ballers in that team. Who mate. was that wronging at the back, man? The left back, their left back. Oh, Danny Mills. Yeah, I could stand him, but. <laughs> I brought Thierry Henry fucking ruined him, mate. <laughs> the little drag back and nutmeg, drag drag back nutmeg, and he stands there in the corner at the Emirates, <laughs> not the Emirates Highbury, sorry. He stands there, and the the line I was right, he's, Thierry Henry's got the ball in the corner flag, right? Danny Mills is trying to sheep him, right? <laughs> the line I was looking straight at it, and he does a drag back nutmeg and goes round him and runs off, and the whole crowd goes, Wee! Danny Mills goes like this to the line. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even then, that was when Andy Gray and Richard Keys were on Sky Sports. Yeah, and that and, and uh, maybe it was the same Leeds game. They were the oh, goats, God, man. They were the goats. I don't, bro, they were unreal, weren't they? they were, yeah, that they was when cancel culture I don't even started. know what happened with them. What even happened? That, oh, that's when cancel culture started because they said, yeah. Oh, to Jamie Redknapp, oh, did you smash it? Did you smash it? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, you'd hang out the back of anything, Jamie. Look here, I like it. They because they and Graham soon is fucking kick Richard Keys. I seen the clip again the other day. Good Graham soon is kicks him as if to say, Fuck, we're live, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah cancel. There's nothing wrong with that, bro. What's wrong with that? Yeah, that's what bloke talk talk. It's do you know what I'm saying? Tony Yaboro as well, man. That guy never scored a shit goal. Yeah, Tony yeah, Yaboro, man. Said, uh, a great point, jo uh, Jenny. Uh, Essien's outside the box screamer, bro. Oh, against fucking Frost. against Jens Lehman, man. Last what minute, a goal, game. man. What a goal, bro. I that made that goal. Like, even, even I wasn't at the ground for that game, yeah, but I was watching it with a Chelsea fan, funny enough. Yeah, and even I stood up and clapped it, mate. I was like, that's a fucking mad goal. Yeah, one, that was one. 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 Yeah, yeah, one, one. Yeah. Fucking, I even stood up and clapped that goal. I was like, mate, what can you do? Yeah, no, mate, no, no one can tell me can yeah, what we got now, and we haven't really, like, we did replace, like, we had Azard and all that, but Robin and Duff, in that team, Joe right? Cole as well. Joe Joey Cole, Cole mm -hmm. what a baller! And Joey Cole had, had it tough with Jose Marino. He had it tough. Didn't he hook him? Didn't it? Jose did a treble sub after twenty six minutes yeah. or something, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and he was on because he went tracking back, but I think he scored. I think he scored, but he went tracking back, so he hooked him. Oh, mate, Tor Andre Flo, for such a tall player, the technical ability, the goals he used to score, bruv. He was, I loved Tor Andre Flo. I loved him, bruv. I loved Andrew Mutu at a point, and then obviously it all went tits up. Mate. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Man still owes Roman Abramovich 16 M's, bruv. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not Roman even joking. He still owes him the money. He probably he does. Yeah, probably does. Yeah, he's just refused to pay it. Roman would probably it. wave it off anyway. Don't care, bruv. Oh, Roman probably said, fuck it, don't worry about it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he still owes the money. Yeah, Oscar as well. Oscar, he, he went to China, didn't he? Yeah, he, he just went for the money. And Deco as well. Deco was sick, bro. He was in the crowd the other night for a game. Yeah, he was bro, Look at Look at the players I'm mentioning. Deco's Balak. Balak. Oh, yeah. Look at the players you've signed over the years, man. Elite ballers, bro. Michael Balak. And the thing is, I remember when you signed Balak, yeah? Right, he didn't really live up to the height that he did before, yeah. And your fans were on him a little bit, yeah. They were like, Oh, yeah, he's, he's not his heart's not in it, he's coming towards the end, he's only here for the paycheck, bro. He's getting paid less than Garnacho. <laughs> no, come on, joking. no, well, yeah, back then it was 140 40 grand, I think, a week he was getting, yeah. Uh, Garnacho's like, probably on that, but 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 it, it, what would he get on paid now? Two times that. Bro, he could be he could be getting four hundred grand now, Balak now. But this is the thing, yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah? People gas up this Mbappe now, and Mbappe is a very good player, yeah. Right? But could you imagine how much Burkamp and Zola and Cantona and Ronaldinho and all these players would be worth now? Yeah. yeah. In fact, they probably wouldn't even have a career, bro. Bro, yeah? you know, you know, know the way Mbappe football is now. It's all about systems. Not lads going to have free free flowing formations. If Ronaldinho is not tracking back, which he never fucking did. Bro, have you seen that clip? I think it was against Bill Bell, where he just flicks it over the guy's head, flicks it back over, and then another one comes, he flicks it over him, 
Yeah, and he does a little back hill. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. Now, that would be, oh, he's taking the piss. Yeah, look at when um, Richarlison was doing the kick ups against Nottingham Forest. Yeah, and everyone was going <laughs> mad about it. Can you imagine them watching Ronaldinho taking the piss every week? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's, 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 and he did. He literally took the piss. But that Ninja Ninja Turtle is just like he's on speed all the time. I, I, I don't really. He, he he's on sorry. Good, he's not a very. Um, he only turns up when it's a massive, massive game, like a final. Yeah, yeah we'll go and stack pad in France. Yeah, but I think take smash the it pace away. What's he got? Yeah, and that's why Henri's, man, when they do the comparison, always oh, the next Henri. Shut up, man. Yeah, Henri had tech. Yeah, Henri yeah, had, had tech. And he had Van Nistelrooy's a Madrid. great shot. He was an animal, bro, beast. Bro. Fucking hate Van Nistelrooy. What a player. I hate Van Nistelrooy. That fucker scored it. And Wayne Rooney dived. Yeah, that was <laughs> in the 50th game. Bro, we would have gone 50 unbeaten. Sol Campbell pulled his leg out. Yeah, Rooney dived. Yeah, VAR would have ruled that off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll probably still be unbeaten now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, John Obi McKell as well. John Obi McKell never gets any props from Chelsea fans, really. Yeah, he oh, was, a, love, uh, he was player. a great, great player. I'll tell you what, though, true story. Uh, Fergie had it all done, contract. He signed something. And then he went, he went to Chelsea. Roman got him. He signed with Chelsea. And ever since then... Sir Alex has never spoke to him ever. Any game, just wouldn't even look at him. Or yeah, nothing. Roman. Roman found a clause to get him out or something, didn't he? Yeah, he found the clause. Let mm. Go. And he and let's have it right. His dad was kidnapped in the World Cup, and Roman mm. went up to John Obi McKell and said, "Do you want me to get your dad? Just let, give me the give me the go." Yeah, I've Roman. seen that. I've seen that podcast. Yeah, <laughs> Roman was like, "Yo, you want me to get your dad? I'll just make one call, bro." <laughs> What, what, a the minerals. <laughs> what an owner, bruv. And you know when he says, I'll make the call, he's phoning Putin, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, KGBs all let out on the loose, bruv. <laughs> Trackers, drones, the lot. You know what mm. I'm saying? Back then, they got all the tech. All the tech to learn. Man, raising Maldini as well. Oh, man. Yeah. Who, who, learned off, who learned off Paolo Nesta and Maldini, Thiago Silva, bruv? That's right. why so Mate, that, that AC Milan team with Ancelotti as manager, yeah, right? Beckham went there, didn't he? Right? Yeah. And they'd signed, I think they'd signed um, Prince Boateng um, and somebody else, I can't remember who, Robinho, maybe. But bro, he walked into the dressing room, yeah, right? Be um, fucking Beckham. And he said, Ronaldinho, I think, had just left. He said, but oh, no, Ronaldinho might have still been there. He goes, but I'm looking around the fucking dressing room. He goes, I'm sat in the dressing room on my ones and I'm seeing all these shirts hung up there. Yeah. Right. And it was just ridiculous, bruv. Like the names Tiago Silva, Nesta, <laughs> like fucking, like, come on, man, Ronaldinho, <laughs> like, do me a favor. Yeah. Kaka, like, bruv, this is what I'm saying. When people sit there and go, you've got an agenda on the player. No, bruv, they're shit. They're just not the levels. They're not. It's the not levels. an agenda. Seidel, yeah, he was in that team. It's yeah, it's not an agenda. They're just shit. Yeah, this this is good, very good. This lot are shit. They they are shit, bro. Let's just be real, right? You, I can count on one hand in the Premier League how many world class players there are. Look at all these players I've got here, bro. Fucking goats, man. Loads of goats here, bro. Oscar Look at that, bruv. Look at that. Yeah, fucking Dennis Wise. Is that Dennis Wise in the left? Yeah, Denny, Denny oh, Wise. And, little and, shit uh, out he was, wasn't he? Viali. <laughs> got Kante, world class. Zola. I've got behind there, I've got Robbins. I've got everyone, man. Everyone's in there, bruv. Fernando Torres, fucking. Where's she got That's down here? Di Matteo, 26 games. He won a fucking double, bruv. Yeah, bruv. First 26. He didn't even manage the team. He just said to the players, just do your thing. Just do your thing. He's had 26 games in FA Cup in the Champions League. 26 games after that, sacked. Standards. Standards. Levels. Yeah. Roman, oh, but Roman, was Roman was a football man. He, like, he could see. He watches it. You know, John Terry even spoke on the pod that he went on his yacht and Roman's, Roman's watching some Brazilian game. And John Terry goes to John Terry, goes, yeah, we're looking at this player. And John Terry's going, who the hell is this? What, what even game is it? I don't even know what you're watching. Because he was a football man. He was scouting players. Do you know who that Brazilian kid was? I think it was Neymar. I think he, and I'll tell you what, man, I wish we signed Neymar, bruv. I wish we signed Neymar. 
Mate, it's, it's mad, yeah. Some of the players that fucking... Like, so I've, I've met a geezer called John Smith, yeah? He was the original super agent. He was Maradona's agent, yeah? Like, I've met him. Like, he was our Shavin's agent, Maradona's agent, a load of other fucking... But he was... He's, um, what's he called? Um, what's his book called? I can't remember. Can't remember. Yeah, but, bro, I will never forget this, yeah? Terry Flowers was there, right? When we were doing UFF stuff, yeah? Back in the day, right? And that John Smith standing there, and he said, oh, yeah, like, blah, blah, I was Maradona's agent. He told the story about how he uh, took him from Barca to Naples, yeah, to Napoli. Yeah, and he said that he got there. <laughs> yeah, I swear down this is true. But I'm going to tell you another story quick after this, yeah, about Roman, right? And it, we're standing, we're just like, yeah, we're in awe. We're like, fucking hell, yeah, the original super agent, bro, right? Yeah. And he's sitting there, and he goes, yeah, uh, we've got to Naples. It fucking took us about 10 hours to get to the fucking meeting. Yeah, because fucking everyone knew Maradona was landing, so it was fucking mad, yeah. yeah. He goes, we get there, right? He goes, we sat down, massive big fuck-off table, and they're all in black suits and all of this and that, yeah? And me and Maradona are sat next to each other with all these fucking heads there. And they went, John, you can leave now. He's ours. Yeah, and he was like, no, no, no. I mean, like, we're going to do the deal. And they just all pulled out the fucking... <laughs> put the guns on the table. It's like, you can leave now. He's ours. <laughs> Yeah, wow. so I got the first flight straight out of fucking Naples. Wow. Yeah. Take this, yeah. I didn't say to him, yeah, Flowers was there. Yeah, we were there. Yeah. So ask him as well, yeah, because it's a fucking true story. I then said to him, yeah, who's the most famous person you can call in your phone football-wise? He said, Roman Abramovich. I said, there ain't no way Roman's picking up the phone to you right now. No way. And I swear down, he phoned Roman in front of us. There was about 20 of us there, right, because we were doing loads of filming. No, this may be fucking eight years ago or whatever. Doing loads of filming. He phoned Roman and he picked the fucking phone up, mate. Yeah. You joke oh, me. He, Hello, John. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. And they're having a full blown conversation. He had one last week. Bruv, I swear down. Yeah. He phoned Roman. Bruv, this guy is the, he owns the FIFA Best Awards. Yeah. FIFA Who's Best Awards. Who's the John Smith. John Smith. Don't know. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. I'll, I'll Google it right now and show you. Yeah? John Smith. I can't remember what his book's called. Uh, John Smith, super agent. He's called Roman, bro. Uh, he's an OBE. <laughs> there we go. He's a fucking oh, OBE as well, bro. Yeah. Known as the original super agent. Yeah. He's one of the UK's most successful and well known sports influencers, bro. Yeah. Spans multiple sports, blah, 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 blah. This is LinkedIn. Yeah. I don't know if I can get through it. No, it's fucking asking for security. All right. But um, where are we? Where are we? I want to find it. Because uh, he was he was our Shavin's agent. Yeah, you remember our Shavin? Yeah, um, was going to go Tottenham. Yeah, and it was yeah. deadline day, and it was snowing in Heathrow, and he was sat at the airport on the phone. And there was clips of our Shavin. I remember the that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, right? he was going to go Tottenham, and we put a bid in, and it got rejected. Right. Uh, Ivan Gazidis was our fucking CEO at the time. Yeah. Right. This guy was our Shavin's agent. Right. He paid the one and a half million out of his pocket that we were missing because we didn't bid the extra one and a half. He paid the one and a half out of his own pocket to get the fucking deal done because he wanted our at Arsenal. Yeah, oh, Ivan yeah. Gazidis phones him up and says, um, what's going on, John? He goes, the deal's done. He goes, yeah, I've seen it on, on Sky Sports, breaking ticker tape and all that. He goes, how much do I owe you? And he goes, one and a half mil. Ivan Gazidis goes, I'll worry it over now, John. Put the phone down. I'll show him sign for Arsenal. Bosh. Yeah, I mean, fucking uh, mate, I'm telling you now, yeah, I swear down, yeah, that guy is one of the most connected people in world football. Well, we need to get him to get Roman on the channel, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is so connected. He owns the FIFA Best Awards. We get yeah. Roman to speak out about connected. what our belo his beloved club has turned into so he can fucking mud these clowns publicly. His book, his book, here we go. His book is on, yeah, it came out in 2016, yeah. Yeah, about eight years ago. That was when we were doing the thing. Yeah, this is fucking spot on. Uh, it's called The Deal. Inside the world of a super agent. Yeah, James Olly wrote, uh, fucking wrote the book. Or with James Olly. But yeah, fucking... Bruv, this guy is so connected, mate. It is crazy. Yeah, he could literally phone up any fucking owner in world football. Any of them. Well, that's, yeah, because well, that's he was... He was he was the Mio uh, Mino Raiola before Mino, right? He was the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, he was Maradona's agent. Yeah, like fucking biggest player on the planet at that point. Yeah, and he was doing this before agents were really a big thing. 
yeah, yeah. yeah do you know what I'm saying? Now everyone can be an agent. You could be an agent. Yeah, I could be an agent. Anyone could be a fucking agent now. But he was the bad, You need your badges, your qualifications, and all that. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, the only badge I wear is a Sony badge at this point. But I mean, yeah, no, fuck, mate. It was funny. I was watching El Sapo. Yeah, El Sapo in Spanish is the toad. Yeah, fucking Javi he looks like a toad. Yeah, like. Yeah, he was wearing the black stone island last night. Yeah. I was like, yo, big up Shavi Minerals, bruv. Like, <laughs> yeah, Shavi Minerals. <laughs> Listen, you know what? I saw that slot. Tope, shout out Tope. You put a picture of slot with the sunglasses. He's wearing a st black stone. Yeah. And now we've got Shavi. <laughs> Listen. Listen, if Shavi signs for Chelsea and he's wearing Stony, you know, we can have a little bit of a discussion, bruv. I mean, he's one of the leaders. You, you don't want Shavi at your club. I know, I'm joking, bruv. I wouldn't have him, bruv. Do you, know, do you know what, though? I'll say this, yeah. I've, I've been to a lot of games, probably 560, 570 games here live. Xavi, yeah, we played, it was a 2-2 at the Emirates against Barca. Messi, Ibrahimovic, Ibra, Ibra scored twice that night. Dinked our keeper from 35 yards. Um, but the best performance I've ever seen live against my team, an individual performance, Xavi. Couldn't get the fucking ball off him all night. No, you can't, yeah, he you was can't. unreal, mate. He's, he's Couldn't get the ball off him. Yeah, and he's fucking tiny, bro. Pass master. Intelligent. Yeah, but his awareness in his brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah his was IQ level. was elite. Yeah, it's like he's always looking. This is why Sesk was a mini him. Yeah, Sesk was a mini him, but not on that level. Mm. Yeah, Sesk was unreal, but he ain't Xavi level. But Cesc came through that academy as well. Yeah, obviously a little bit younger, but he also played with him. Yeah, every time Cesc plays, yeah, for you or for us or for Buff, Buff he's always always looking, always looking at it. It's like he's got wing mirrors on. Yeah, he always knows where, and he's always ducking into the space and bang, first, okay, I can pop that one off or I can take three or four touches, then release it. Yeah. You, bro, you see these brain-dead footballers week in, week out now. They're fucking awful. Yeah, I'm going to watch Liverpool tonight. Yeah, in fact, that team news has come out. Watch how many times Mohamed Salah runs the ball out of play for a throw in. Yeah, and I don't rate Salah. He's do overrated, bruv. Yeah, facts, bro. This guy goes so many games, but then he'll score two goals, and that's the end of that. Yeah, it's just he just suits the system. But put mm. him into Man City, he ain't balling, bruv. I, I don't care what you tell me, man. Like, anyone who plays Tiki Taka or anything like that, or. Wait, he's not even playing. Fucking hell. Hey, right, look at the state of that team. Jeez, what's happened to Liverpool? <laughs> Liverpool. Hey, what's up, guys? So they've got Keller in goal, Gomez at right back, Kanate, Van Dyke, Simicas, Curtis Jones, McAllister, and Endo, Harvey Elliott, Nunes, and Gakpo. Bruv, you know we lost to their C team with kids in the Carabao Cup final. Jota's back on the bench, Robertson on the bench, Gravin is that? Salah, Sabosli, Diaz, they're all on the bench. Trent's on the bench, fucking El Consa, Connor Pro. Mate, he don't rate Atalanta, which is mad. He's obviously looking forward to the game at the weekend. Who Liverpool got the weekend? Who they got the weekend? Let's have a fucking butchers at them. Fulham away. Yeah, he's got one eye on Fulham away. Fucking, he's an idiot, mate. He should go and blitz them tonight, three or four nil. Yeah, and then he can rest them all for the next week. But here's what it is. Adam cases. who's better, King of Zamunda or Michael Jackson? <laughs> The king of Zamunda is no good, guys. Uh, came through Chelsea Academy. See, he's a Cobham. He's a Cobham player. Fucking Eddie and Katie. Yeah. yeah. Not crying about that one, though, are you? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Nico Jackson's better than him. Yeah, he's better than him. Bro, Nico Jackson's the only good for a slosh pot wet, and that's it, bro. I mean, this guy, you know, some, some journalists compared him going, he's going to be, he could be as good as Thierry Henry. I just lost it, bruv. Oh, he was average at Villarreal. <laughs> bruv, I just, I can't, man. I can't take it seriously, man. <laughs> man. That's such a, that's a howler, bruv. Howler. Uh, big up other races. Even Dortmund, the team we beat under Graham Potter, they reached the quarterfinal in the UCL. We are getting worse. We can't be fucking <laughs> Mate, it's mad, isn't it? It's so bad, bruv. I you don't want to get that old. Monday, I have to I laugh. At least, at least you can watch some proper football between now and Monday before watching that monstrosity again. It's going to be dross. It was dross. Watch off against Villa, man. We're going to pump Villa. We'll do them 2-3-0. Yeah, you'll see Man City slap Luton about six. Yeah. All right. Just relegate Luton. Oh, but, 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 but you can go through gardens to get to their ground. And what? They're shit. Yeah, they've won six games all year, mate. Relegate them. They're crap. Yeah, all of them. All three of them teams that have come up, the worst three teams collectively, 
not individually, but collectively as a free, ever to come in the Premier League. They're Who's fucking awful. The title, Lee? I'd love to say Arsenal, but I think Man City, bro. I think Man City. Do you think who's who who's got the easier run of fixtures, would you say? Probably City or, or Liverpool. We've got the hardest, I know that much. But I don't know. United near the end, you got us. Tottenham away, second and last home game. Well, away yeah. game yeah. We've still got to play Villa tomorrow. I'm oh, sorry, Saturday, or Sunday even. Wolves away. That's not an easy game. I'd say Liverpool probably got the easiest run in because oh, Man, Man City have still got to play Tottenham away when they ain't fucking ever scored a goal there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, but... I think there's a few swings around about but I just think if Liverpool can keep fit, I think they can win it. I, I, I'm still saying City. If I was to put money on it, I'm going to City. You know, I just yeah. think like they, they're purring right now. Yeah, since that nil-nil against us, they've scored 11 goals in three games. Yeah, and they've played Real Madrid in that, and they scored three against them in the in the Bernabeu. Yeah, uh, I don't know, man. They're going to slap Luton at the weekend. Yeah, they'll slap at least three or four, at least. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a six, a five or a six. They'll break the record of winning the most in succession, though. Then everyone will start crying about, oh, nobody can win it until he leaves. <laughs> yeah, we'll fucking fold the club then, innit? Yeah, because Conte found a way to beat him. Yeah, Klopp found a way to beat him. Yeah, everyone who's trying to copy Pep's style of football fails against Pep. Yeah, Conte don't have Pep's style of football and neither does Klopp. And they both succeeded. Yeah, Tommy Tooks don't play the same football. We beat him in a cup final. Champions yeah. League. Why is my yeah. missus ringing me? She knows I'm working. Get out of here. <laughs> right, do you know what I mean? What's that all about? Trying to voice call me in that. Like, I'm working, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> Live on stream, Pablo. It's landed. Yeah, man. Johnny Lee, 30, 40 million for uh, Ivan Tony. You having him for that money? Yeah. I'd have him for fucking 130 or 40, bro. He's class. Ain't my I money. I won't pay that much because he's. Oh, well, it ain't your money, is it? Is he 20? 20 bro, you paid 115 for fucking Kaiseido. I know what they did. I didn't. I wouldn't have paid that <laughs> either. Fuck. What an embarrassment, bro. They've embarrassed us. Mm. They actually embarrassed us. They made us the biggest laughing stock. They are the they are the worst owners in sporting history. You know that they're worse than the Glazers. I went on Talk Sport Live, bruv, said it ages ago. What is it? Almost two months now. I've said it on my stream. Yeah, on the, on the, on the yeah, big yeah. platform, I said they are worse than the Glazers because everyone deems the Glazers the worst owners. Yeah, All right. And everyone was looking at me going, "Oh no, they're not the worst than the Glazers." Now you got United going. I think they're, they're, they're definitely worse than the Glazers, mate. Yeah, definitely worse than the Glazers. That's how bad we are. We need to get them out, bruv. Facts. All right, but listen, big up to everyone in here. We've had a monumental stream to, today, bruv. Absolutely mental. But listen, smash them likes. Put all your comments down below. Make sure you go and support Lee on his channel. Um, his main channel, uh, Lee Gunner, and then obviously he's got his Lee Reacts channel, which is booming as well. Uh, which he's going to do a watch along straight after this. So make sure you go and follow him on that. His links to all his channels and socials are down below in the description. So make sure you go and have a butcher's there and do the right thing. And big up to everyone in here. Uh, I think we've we've landed plenty of minerals. We say it as it is. We're real, real football lovers and fans, and we love our football clubs, and we want the best for our football clubs. But we also love football. Um, and it was nice to talk about a bit of football, brother, a bit of, of heritage as well, brother. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? It's nice to just bring back those memories to make you realise how far football's in the gutter right now. In 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 how it just the way it is. It's all money driven and PR driven. That's the reality. Yep. Facts. You know? Absolutely. Um, big up for having me on. Big up the chat. Come on. Big Smash up. Smash the likes up. People, Go. Smash them now. Smash them all, bruv. But Lee, Lee, do you want to tell everyone what you're doing as well? Uh, or what you're coming up next couple of days or yeah, man. Um I'm going live in 15 minutes. I've got a shepherd's pie ready and waiting for me. Um yeah, man, I've got a shepherd's pirate homemade. Not a bird's eye, obviously. 
Not yeah, 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 none of that cheap shit, bruv. I'm making myself <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? Chef Lee in the building cooking every day, bruv. Like cooking, cooking online, room, cook, bruv. yeah, <laughs> cooking online, cooking offline, bruv. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm going live in 15 minutes for the Liverpool game. Um, tomorrow, there's tomorrow, Friday. Yeah, probably a press conference reaction um, to Lego Ed. <laughs> I love when you call him Lego Ed. Uh, Lego Ed and um, Merchant. Yeah. Lego Ed Merchant. And um, and then on with Rants at 5 p.m. UK. And then Betis versus Celta Vigo. And Celta Vigo uh, sacked the fat Spanish waiter, Rafa Benitez, bruv, and they've been playing well since then. So the deadest team, the worst team to watch in this league, have now suddenly got better. So that should be a good game. So we'll be there for that. And then Saturday, um, I'm not doing the Spurs game because Atleti are playing Girona early kickoff. So F Spurs, we're going to watch Atleti versus Girona, some proper football. Yeah, I love Diego Simeone. I'd love him at Chelsea, bruv. What a gaffer. That man said if it's beef, it's cottage pie. Yeah, it's, it's a cottage pie then. Yeah, it's beef, beef yeah. Um, yeah. And I've, got to, I've got to mention to you as well, Aberdeen, who has always gotten top four in the Scottish League, have now gone with data. All right. Yeah, they're about 13, 13 for 12 or something. They're sitting mid-table. <laughs> <laughs> the game is gone. Anyone who uses data only, it's, we're finished. We're, our soul's been sucked out of our football club, and that's a fact, bruv, right now. And the only yeah. soul that's left is, is the supporters, and that's it. That's how we're going to end it, bruv. We need to regain, reclaim our football club and land it, bruv, and keep protesting. And Clown Lake, out, yeah? Let's have it right. Where is it? Oh, you seen that one? Yeah, get him in the woods, bruv. Um, <laughs> Clown Lake out, bruv. Let's have it right. And as always, we see things they'll never see. Up the chills, up the Mills FC. Big up to Lee for coming on. I'm sure we'll do another one soon. Um, and respect to everyone. Like, subscribe, comment, all that. And we'll, we'll see you later. Let's go.